Jimmy. Welcome back to another episode of the We Love Gaming Podcast. This is episode 56. Today is a sunny, bright day in California, IA. And uh, I'm here to talk about games. My name is Godly Sovereign, but I'm not here alone. Um, normally, we would have Mark Uriah here, but he's away off of some, uh, some baby, you know, some baby news <laughs> coming baby in. Coming his, wife, yeah, his wife's uh, due any moment now for a baby, so he's taking time off for that. So we'll probably miss him for like maybe uh, a month or so. Uh, so hopefully we'll get him back soon so we can hear what he's been playing and whatnot and what he's been getting into. But, of course, the man across from me who has the world record for the most rupees collected in Ratchet and Clank <laughs> ever yeah. is Sir Knight. What's going on, man? Good, man. Doing good. It's been a good week. Uh, had my graduation party. That was right. a ton of fun. Finally, it's official. Right. I am a licensed teacher in Oregon and California. So Congratulations. Uh, that's really exciting. So yeah, it's been a really nice chill week, man. Just a lot of free time right now in the summertime with games and games and more games. Like I probably got like five games. Yeah, man, my... you collected like a <laughs> dog on <laughs> freaking yeah. for your for your party, man. I got a lot of you games. You got a lot of party, games. Dude. So You got uh what was it? Near Replicant? I got Near Replicant. I got Persona 5 Strikers. Strikers, right? Uh, Bio Mutant. Okay. I got Scarlet Nexus coming. That was a gift, too. Dang. Um, just crazy. I yeah. got a lot of that's games a, to play, man. That's a good pick I up, got man. a lot of games to play, man. So. Yeah, man. The only thing that would have added to your plethora of uh, of games is if, if your baby had come beforehand, <laughs> you would have got to collect on Father's Day. That's right, dude. That's yeah. right. I get more on Father's Day. Right? <laughs> For yeah. sure. So, <laughs> look like you're going to have to go to school again, get your, get yourself another uh, doctorate or something like that, and then go ahead and, and collect so you can collect right before Father's Day. Yeah, right? this has been a year of game collecting for yeah. sure, man. That's dope, though. Because I have my birthday, too. Yeah, that's you right. Know? Your birthday so, was literally like the same week or, the same or like week, the week before? The week before. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's so. like, I, that's when I got Biomutant, actually. Okay, That's yeah. when I got Biomutant was on my birthday. Right. So it's like crazy, man. So many games. Shoot, man. Well, that's awesome. So um, I know that while we were there um, at the end of your party, yeah, uh, it was a couple of us left, and we got to actually play Mario Party. Oh yeah, and so that's another one I got for my graduation was Mario Party too. Okay, so yeah, yeah I got like five plus. Games yeah, you got so you got solid pickings. So I don't games. even know how you're gonna play all of those things, but I'm, I guess you off right now for summer vacation. I got, so time you got a right lot now, of time. But games. yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, what Mario Party was that that we played? Was that was Mario Party Super. Mario Party Super, okay. or just Super Mario Party, something like that. It was like mm -hmm. the one made for the Switch. I don't think. It's like a number. Okay. Or if it was a number, I don't know which one it is. A Mario Party 8? Yeah, you'd have to look that up on there. Um, but what's crazy is, like, I got that for graduation, but they just announced at E3, the Nintendo Treehouse, the Mario Party Superstars. Right, So I'm right, probably right. going to have to get that one, too, and that comes out in just a couple months. The Superstars, yeah. That one looked like it was pretty cool. Yeah, um, definitely, man. Mario Party is a ton of fun. But we got a chance to actually play Mario Super Mario Party. Right. This last weekend at my graduation, and you know, I had some family watching, and they wanted to hear what we had to think about that game. Like, what were our thoughts? You and I both played it, right? At the same time, I mean, we even had that one instance where we got on the same squad for a minute there, and it was yeah, for like, piece of cake. Yeah, I mean, uh, so <laughs> like when you're looking at, I mean, obviously because because of uh, how late the party was, and then when everybody left, we didn't get a whole lot of time before I had to go. But um, we were able to play, like, one full Mario Party match. Um, I don't think we played everything that was available, right? right? So there was still a lot that mm -hmm. we haven't gotten to see. Um, but as far as the concept is, I almost felt like we were playing a game of Monopoly or something like that. In a lot like, of ways. Because you're, like, on the board or it's whatever. It's a board game kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like a board game. And then um, I liked how you could semi-strategize. Uh, in a sort of way, as far as like what route you want to take across mm -hmm. the board, like do you want to try to collect tons and tons of coins, or are you just trying to beeline it straight to the star? It seems like the star is the main priority that Absolutely, you have to worry yeah. about in the game, and the star is it's unforgiving. Like it's it's really nobody's friend. It will do what it wants when it wants, mm -hmm. and it relocates 
every time that you uh, get it. So as soon as somebody grabs it, the star relocates to a different position. And it could be right in front of you or it could be far away from you. Now, you were the grand champion. Yeah, so of, of the I'll night. just say, like, I was having a ton of fun, mm-hmm. like a lot, a lot of fun. Right. I don't know if that's because I was winning, which I'm sure that played a role. Um, <laughs> sure had a good part. I was in doing it. really well. Um, it was just flowing. Mm-hmm. I will. I will say, like, there's lots of things to say. Like, I thought the little Joy-Con controller was perfectly fine for this game. Yeah. Like, I didn't feel like I was missing a full size controller. Right. I thought they did a great job making that fun enough. Cause yeah, I, I definitely kinda, didn't need a pro pad for that one. Yeah, like when I've played Mario Kart on the Switch with family mm-hmm. members, I just it's not as fun Cause playing it's with cramped. that. It's so cramped and like you're yeah. trying to press buttons. Right. I feel like if I had a full second full size controller, I'd have a lot more fun playing Mario Kart. But mm-hmm. this game, I was perfectly cool with it. Like I didn't feel like I was missing anything. I was like, this is perfectly suitable for what this game is offering. This this little mini Joy Con is good mm-hmm. enough. I don't feel like I need the big controller. Like I do with other multiplayer games on the Switch. So I'll say that. They did a great job adapting the controller to the game. Uh, the second thing I'll say is uh, just the ability to like, you know, I think it's a Mario Party standard, but when they short you into teams, like that is one of the funnest things I like about Mario Party. It like, definitely adds a different dynamic. It adds a different it. dynamic. Like it's not always, okay, we're all individually racing for something. Like it's random. Like you could yeah, be not one versus three itself, right? or two v two. And you're playing with the friends. Those one That's verse a lot of threes fun, are man. brutal, man. The one verse threes those are like, brutal. Those are probably some of the funniest moments because we had family watching and they were just like cracking up, man, yeah. trying to see some of us fight and punch, like the one we had to punch the blue dot. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It was total and it's, fun. The way it's set up, it's it's cool because it's not like totally rigged against the person who's playing by themselves, but it is definitely difficult. It's um, harder for sure. Yeah, I know that. Uh, you know that the one thing where you're like, it's like a triangle of little balls that light up, and then you just have to punch them, um, when they light up, and whoever gets the most points wins on the side. But if you're playing solo by yourself, you're in the center, so you have a, a lot, a lot less space to move around in. You yeah. just have to be quick. But when you're playing, um, with the other three people. You know, you're on the outsides. So it's like, okay, who's going to get what? You know what I mean? You got to kind of like the first ones to get it. You know, you kind of try to have a plan, but it doesn't end up working out like that. You know? Exactly. And uh, then they had another one where it was like uh, bombs flying, floating down from the sky. And I think you had that one where you were solo. And then there was three of us. I won that. Oh, the tennis match. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, tennis match thing. But you managed to win and that one. Ma- and I won that one. Yeah, because you didn't yeah. you had less space to travel and you yeah. could just hit everything and Yeah, and I just kinda feel for it. It was working for me. Right, yeah. And it seemed like it was kind of uh a little hard to to judge the depth perception at sometimes because there's so many bombs going down. Yeah. And you don't know exactly where they're floating because they look like they're floating down in the same spot. I also think the one that I thought was the hardest was actually the one you got, the one V three was the quiz one. Because oh, yeah, that was rough. on that one, you had a quiz, like an image went across and it was like fruit. And like how many Koopa Troopers, Koopa, Koopa Troopers are holding fruit or something like that. what fruit showed yeah. this much or what was the fourth fr- fruit shown. And he was by himself and all he would do was just pick a question. Right. And I only the have image. the questions that they give you. So they give you like three questions. Right. And if you're the person that that everybody's going against, you have to select a question, and then they get a chance to get it. But the reason why it was hard was because only one of us had to get it right. Right. So we are a group of three, and there's like four answers. If we just spread out, like odds are we're gonna get it right. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what made it a little unfair. Was that it was hard. It was those are hard questions. The quiz questions were hard, but because only one of us had to get it right, I thought I was like, oh, that's kind of a little unfair to you. That and talking, like because it's a couch oh, co-op we can all game. Share our minds, if yeah. one person is paying attention to each, like to one aspect, and another person is paying attention to another aspect, when you see the questions, you can break it down. Like okay. Who was paying attention to the fruit? Who was playing paying attention to the right. creatures coming across? Yeah, you probably Who noticed at one whatever. point in time I was like, why don't we parse this out? How about you count the enemies, I'll count the fruit. Right. You count what happens where, right? And right. And then all the you're doing is is like, yeah. you know, just yelling out like, oh, there was three of those or whatever. Right. Go to this one or whatever. So it's just like, damn, that was kind of a little uneven. I see I could see how that would be a little bit more fair if you were playing online against uh, yeah, that'd be people a little that are in different online. locations yeah. because then you can't cooperate with each other, you know? But the, still, the fact that you have to get one person to get the right answer kind of sucks. And then uh, there was the other one, I believe, uh, 
I'm trying to think. It was like a memory game. I think it was another like 1v3 or something like that. But it was like a a memory game of who who could go in like the certain locations. No, no, no. That was the same game, right? Because you had to stand on a spot for like the fruit. It's like a memory game. That was a memory game. Yeah. But that was like, it was also partial with that quiz. Right. And and that thing was like, you just yell out, oh, I think there was three. So everybody runs over to the threes. Oh, and if you're you're unsure, you know, Ellie goes down on that one. It don't matter if they fall through because you get respawned for the next question. So sometimes, like, it seemed like a very well balanced when you did one v three, and then sometimes it didn't seem as well balanced. Right, right. So that will be the that would, I guess that would be my only critique of this game is that it can be hard to balance a game when it's like one v three, or when it's couch co op, or even know, couch co op too, most. because you're wondering, yeah, how much is the talking involved? Right, right, right. But yeah, it do was you a total eliminate blast. the talking or what? But yeah, it was. This definitely game was a fun. ton of fun. I thought we had a total blast with it. Like. This is a great. You can. I help. This is like a board game. You can do a board game night with this. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of just playing a board game, let's go play Mario play Party. Mario Party yeah. It feels like a board game too. Well, Super Mario. Put Party, it into yeah. the mix of your board game lineup if you're playing a, f- a few that night. Like yeah. this would qualify, in my opinion. Like, I'm really happy with the purchase. I'm really happy I got it. Yeah, it uh, was a solid pickup. I mean, yeah, it was I, a real solid pickup. It, it had me contemplating whether I should get it or not. Yeah, because I, I think like, your okay, father-in-law yeah, this is pretty, would have a good time cool. with that with your wife. You guys just sitting around playing that. Yeah, it's I was also fun. thinking just you know with like my kids. Oh, your kids? Stuff, yeah, your kids would probably like it. They're getting close to that age. You gotta, yeah, you gotta kind of yeah, like gotta they gotta wait. learn the controllers yeah. a little bit better and whatnot to be able to know like what button to press mm-hmm. or whatnot. But I mean, the game is is just straight RNG. Um, I thought that it was really cool uh, with the different dice that you could get, but I thought it was OP for the allies, man. I, th- I if thought you the found allies an ally, that was way OP. too RNG ish. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, I like Mario Party because I have a hard time with RNG games, mm-hmm. but Mario Party kind of offsets that when you have the, the 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 little battles, where like, okay, I can actually use my skill or my ability here. It's not complete RNG to win this. Right. But like, yeah, if you're bumping on the board and you get an ally and I don't, you're way ahead. Right, like because that's a double. second. An ally will give you like a second dice to roll on its own, right? So, um, you know, each of your your character will have like one regular dice, which is just like one through six, and then a trick your dice. your uh you'll have like a second dice, which is special to that character. Mm-hmm. So you could have like ones where there's nothing but pluses, like you'll get coins on two two sides, and then you'll get like two, three, five, and seven. Uh, for dice rolls or whatever, or you could have one that has like negatives but and different dice numbers, numbers on the but rest a high of, one or yeah. something like that. Yeah, so it's like a risk and reward on some characters, and sometimes it's just all reward mm-hmm. on another. But when you get an ally, you legit get their dice to choose from. Uh, so now you'll have three dice or whatever, and then on top of that, they roll whatever dice. dice you mm-hmm. roll is it's they they roll a dice with you so it's like double the chances and the ally sticks with you the whole game it's yeah. not like a one it's not not one off yeah, yeah it's, it's like it they stick with, with you, you. Yeah. and you can pile them up i had two allies you had by the t- and you had two allies right no you had 3 no i had two you had two, I had two allies i know i had, had two allies i had 3 and then i lost one okay you did lose an ally yeah, yeah. And that really helped you come back. You were getting close to yeah. catching up when you got that Because I was starting to move a little bit more Dude, to get the towards the stars. Dude, because the OP as heck, man. Yeah, and those spaces I will agree. is what that matters, man. That's a weird addition. I don't, honestly don't know how I feel about the allies. Yeah. Um, it's hard for me to judge, right, because I had allies, so I was liking it. But yeah. I think like it made it a little bit unfair, in my opinion. Yeah, that would I feel be one like, thing I would cut out. I feel like giving me the, the additional dice to roll like, you know, instead of my regular dice or my special dice, I get one other special dice that I could roll instead. That's cool. But to get my whatever dice I choose to roll and their dice at the same time. That's what's To crazy. have the extra I movements. I think it's cool. Like, you just like got nuts. one extra dice to choose from. That's fine. Right, right. But that exactly. they roll and add their roll to yours. Yeah, it's not Crazy. Nuts. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, you get, like, if you get some really good drops, you know, some really good rolls, you could have, like, four or five allies, man. And they have, like, a selection of allies that you could choose from. It's random. And it goes, it, it starts to eliminate all of the ones that have already been chosen. So, you know, two people can't have the it's same ally. It's a finite ally. number of allies, and it's, and it's definitely two people can have the same ally. Right. And if you look out and get all the allies or something like that, <laughs> I don't know how you would do you that. You probably but... could get a few. I wonder if they cap it. We don't know. Yeah. I don't know. We never got that far. but <laughs> That's nuts, man. Yeah. It's at least stopped at three. You know what I mean? It, it, it's the, at least at three is, exactly. is, uh, is yeah. another min. And so. it's crazy because it doesn't matter, like, on the star squares. 
you don't have to land on it if you just pass it. You just it. pass so it. So you and don't get care it. if you have 15 moves. Right. Because you just want to get to it and pass it and you get the star. Yeah. So it's like, that's why the ally is so, um, so busted, I think. You know? Yeah. But otherwise, it was a blast. I'm glad we got it. It's a definitely a, probably an eight and a half, uh, ten for me. Yeah, I gave it a solid, like, you know, almost like a nine. Almost a nine. It yeah. was a lot of fun. It man. was really it was fun. A lot of I fun. mean, I definitely want to play more of the uh, the missions, and I kind of want to see. And other modes. What it would be, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I want to see, like, what it would be like solo, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. if you were playing it. Because a lot of times you're not going to yeah, be able to play it's with like friends. With you know? friends, it's a nine. Solo, yeah. it might be an eight, right? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah for sure. Absolutely. But other than Mario Party that we played together, what have you been playing this week? Dude, man, I've been, like, totally addicted to Disco Elysium. Hell yeah. Just like On that totally hard, huh? addicted, man. Huh. And it just seems like it's never ending. Like, I'm playing a lot. Like, I put a, quite a few hours in this week. And, like, I feel like I've made progress, but I also feel like I'm totally stumped and, like, don't know what to do next. Hmm. Like, you know, it's a murder mystery. So I'm trying to find, like, I have leads. Like, I kind of know who did it now. Right. I kind of have an idea where to go. But they're just lost in the world. And, like, no one knows where they're at. No one's seen them. And it's like, I don't know what to do now. So you have to find them. Yeah. Like, yeah, I have to, to find get, them. To accuse them. Exactly. To like, mm. yeah, actually accuse them and arrest them. Yeah. But it's like, I can't find them and I don't know where to go. And I'm like out of leads. And so it's like, gosh, yeah, I made lots of progress. I figured lots of things out, but I haven't, I still feel like I'm totally, you know, totally behind on like actually catching this perpetrator. Right. You know, um, sometimes like if I were to recommend it to somebody, I would just say like, be careful because like if I were to recommend it to you, Mm -hmm. it can get wordy. And there are some encounters where like, it's incredibly wordy. Like they're giving you like full on histories of like this world. I'm like, so you got a paragraphs. lot of stuff you got to remember throughout that conversation. Multiple to paragraphs, dude, to read. And it's like, I'm about to fall yeah. asleep. And this is not really So that one's not voice acted. No, it's all voice acted. Okay. All right. Even the long paragraphs are. But it's a lot. And I feel like, okay, this is interesting, but this isn't pushing me towards finding my perpetrator. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just interesting facts about the country or the city or the the governments that rule or, and then like, you're trying to decide, I guess part of it is like you deciding where do you fall politically? Right. Where do you fall as a cop? Like, so you're learning about yourself Mm -hmm. and you talk to people about like the world and stuff. And like, that's cool and all, but what's most fun for me is like the chase, the murder mystery chase. Okay. Like learning new facts about the murder or like, Oh yeah, I did see that. Getting closer to solving. He went this way. Yeah, getting closer to solving it. Those are the, the more fun conversations for me. Right. Um, and so I would say be careful. Like, I don't want to say it's like 100% there's no flaws. Only the fact that be careful with those wordy scenarios. Like, if I were to recommend it to you. Like, they can get tired. Right. And they can feel like you're wasting lots of time um, in your li- your personal life reading through all this stuff that doesn't really have any, you know, pertinence to like what you're trying to do solve this murder mystery mm-hmm. um but otherwise like i'm really really addicted i can't stop it's just like okay one more person let me just go find one more person to talk to or let me go look around one more corner let me go turn over one more stone <laughs> you know like i'm just trying so hard to like follow the leads and catch this person right that i'm like hooked and i'm addicted to it hmm. so like um but it can get very difficult because there's lots of like you know Strength checks, you know, karma, uh, charisma checks. Okay. Like I was telling you where you have to like a percentage chance to get it. Right, right, right. And um, you can do lots of saves coming in there. Or you can, um, another thing you can do is like when you see a a check come up, Uh you can like exit out of the conversation and you can see what kind of check it is. Like, so if it's, uh, if it's like an authority check, then you can like go into your inventory and find all your gear that gives you plus authority. Really? Slip it on real quick and then (laughs) go back into the conversation. Okay. And then uh, see if it increases your percentage of winning. A lot, supposedly that's how the game's supposed to be played. Like a lot of people save all their level ups too, because every mm-hmm. level up gives you a point in one of those attributes, logic, authority, rhetoric, whatever. So they only use them when they need to. Right. So when a check comes up, they go, okay, I need some, you know, authority here. So let me throw a point into authority. Let me throw all my gear onto authority, jump back in. And now it's like a high chance to succeed and you, you pass it. Okay. That's how a lot of people pass these checks. Interesting. Um, or you could save scum it, which I saw a lot of people doing that. Part of me is like, 
they knew that you could do this. You could save scum this. Clearly, yeah. the developers knew this. It's almost they're probably like totally okay with it because I think it's, it's totally maybe. encouraged. Yeah, because not only is there like a save option, there's a quick save option. Mm. So that's what I'll do. Like I'll come up to a guy, I'll quickly quick save it, <laughs> then I'll start the conversation. If okay. I didn't like how the conversation goes, I'll load my quick save. Yeah. Right. And it's like really fast. And so you can just kind of like retry as many times as you want. Yeah. And the reason why I like that and the reason why, like, if I'm the developers, like, I understand why they allowed this to be in the game. Because there's lots of cool things you would miss. Like, if they didn't let you do this, there'd be lots of really neat and really cool situations that you would never get to experience because you failed to check. And, like, getting to pass the check, you get to see a lot more of the story. You get to, like, unlock areas you wouldn't have been able to get to. Had you not passed certain checks yeah. um, and learned certain things, like it gets like almost sci-fi, this game. Mm-hmm. I know it's a murder mystery, but it gets almost like otherworldly. Like mm-hmm. I don't want to ruin anything for anyone who hasn't played it, but it gets out there, man. And it's like, gosh, some of these checks were really hard to pass had I not had enough, you know, um, whatever stats Points I needed whatever, yeah. to get through it. And uh, being able to like experience those things would have been a bummer to never have experienced them. So I, I see why they did it, and I get it. But it can get tiring, man, because lots of checks are very hard. And you can try, like, five, ten times to get the check. Yeah. You know, if it's, like, an 8% chance, you're going to try about ten times, odds are, before you get it. Right. And uh, it could be like, oh, I just don't have the patience for this right now, and you want to stop playing. Mm-hmm. But the allure is there enough that you kind of want to keep going, and you kind of want to see what you can learn. And okay. so um, I really like it. I definitely uh, recommend it. It's it's a masterpiece in a lot of ways. Um, the writing is top notch. I'm hoping this week I beat it finally, or this weekend, <laughs> so I can be done with it. Yeah. And I can move on to something else because, like I said, I have so many games to play. But I'm I'm hooked enough that I got to keep going. Right. right. I got to figure this to see thing it out. out. Yeah. I'm trying to see it out, but it's it's asking a lot. It's long. Mm-hmm. I'm like, when does this thing end? This is long, dude. Yeah, for sure. And so uh, I'm trying to see it out, but. But we'll see. I might have to switch to something else just to give myself a break from it. But, yeah. Um, but I've been hooked on it. And then other than that, I did hop into Outriders for just a minute because okay. they had the new DLC. So those of you who play Outriders, and if you didn't know, they launched a new DLC for Outriders mm-hmm. where they gave everyone, I think, two free legendaries. Okay. Two free legendary weapons and their top roll, their high roll. Oh. So they are maxed stats. So is that maxed of what you can get or maxed completely, like, in the game? Well, they're maxed at what your level is, but when you level up, they'll level up at their stat level. Oh, okay. So right. if, they're, if they're a maxed rolled gun, then they'll keep leveling up as maxed rolled. Okay. It's not like when you level up a weapon, it re-rolls the stats. It stays yeah, yeah. those stats that it was. Okay. So um, I got, like, a, I'm level 47, right? So I got a maxed damage level 47 gun. Mm. What's cool about it, too, is... it. I knew it was the God roll. They call them God rolls because uh-huh. it's the max. Yeah. And uh, I could tell where my other guns rolled. I was like, oh, so that's what a max roll damage is. So hmm. I can see how where my other guns had that fared. Yeah. Like if they were good rolls or not. Right. And I was like, I had a couple that were like, oh, that's actually really close to like a God roll. I would have never known what the max was had I not, had I not got this God roll. I wouldn't know what the highest is. Yeah. Um. So... That was kind of neat, but the guns I got were like not super useful to me. Oh, okay. I got that storm one that you got that drops the lightning. Storm whip? Yeah, storm whip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got the funeral pyre. So two guns you already oh, have. Oh, damn. Yeah. So I didn't you have never them. had those? I didn't have those guns, but okay. you had those guns. So what about the DLC, though? What's crazy, though, is I think you can get the you, you got the storm whip from us doing that boss farm. Yeah. And the funeral pyre is available from Tiago, I think, from right. his inventory. But so I got, I got it from two a yeah, but I got two guns that are easy to acquire, right, right, which right. is really frustrating, which is why I was curious what you got. Because from what I understand, they're get, the guns they give you are ones that aren't in, aren't in, in your inventory. The system scans your inventory. Mm-hmm. and your um, So as long as you've never gotten it before, tiers, it'll... Yeah, and your and Or your mods. is it just do you, as long as you didn't keep it? No, even your mods. So it's okay. supposed to be a gun that you've that's never dropped for you before. Hmm. So that's the one reason why I wanted you to hop in. I just wanted to see what you got because it's supposed to be guns that I've never dropped for you before. Yeah. And you have both the guns that I got already. Right. So you'd get something new. Okay. That I don't well, have. uh I'll hop in. I'll hop in this weekend and then I'll just put it in the comments down below what I got. And then another thing they guns. did was they added a buff to legendary drops by a hundred percent. 
Oh yeah, a hundred percent increase to legendary drops. So you might actually be able to do some of these uh, pods and actually get good gear. Yes, and they the also tops. put a legendary timer in, meaning that if you don't get a legendary within a certain amount of time, you get one. Really? Yes. Is it something that you can actually physically see? Or? No, no, it's not a physical timer. It's an internal timer. Okay. But because remember, I told you I'd go multiple, multiple runs without ever getting anything. Yeah. And I was telling you about that. Yeah. And you were like, you I got one a day, but like I wasn't even getting like one a day. And you thought maybe there was an internal timer guaranteeing one a day. Yeah, I thought it was something like if you just a do a pod a once a day that you would get you one You at least get legendary, one legendary a day. Yeah, but right. it wasn't working for me. It seemed to be working for you. Yeah. But now I do think it's something going to be like what you thought it was. It's going to be like that now. Mm, where okay. like if you just put a little bit of time in every day, you're You'll going get to get a legendary. That's cool. And to prove that point, I went and I did – um, a 12, I think a level 12, uh, expedition. Yeah. Cause that's my highest I, I can go to is 12. Right. And, uh, I, I beat it. I okay. tried it my first try and I died, but I tried it one more time and I beat it and I got two legendaries. Oh yeah. Two in one run. Two. two. Huh? Nice. And I got a helmet and I got a gun again and it was a gun I didn't have. Wow. Also, they introduced a new mechanic that when, um, that might legend- be worth starting to play again. Cause when a legendary drops for you, the system checks your bag and your mods. And if it's already dropped for you, they re-roll the legendary. Oh, to give you something else? Right. So it could end up being something you have as well. But if it notices that, you don't, that you've had it before, there's a re-roll. Hmm. It's kind of a cool little way to try to make it a new item every What's time. What's cool is if you get to see it. Like oh, if it's the sitting there on the ground and then it, it looks like it's like a gun or something and then it rolls and it shakes into a different gun so, and it, I didn't it rolls see that. to a helmet or but something. But at the same time, like I I just press down. What's uh-huh. all the gear? I just press down and yeah, then yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. just pick it all up. Right. Like a, a couple things dropped for me and uh, I couldn't even see if there were legendaries on the ground. Like when I opened the pod and all the gear was shooting out of it. Uh-huh. I know when we did it before, I saw the orange You see an beam, orange highlight, I didn't yeah. even see an orange beam. I was like, shit, man, I didn't get a legendary here. Ah. And then I picked it up, and two were in there. Hmm. And I was like, oh, dope. So okay. I don't know how they're distributing legendaries now. Yeah. But uh, that was just, that was pretty That's exciting. That's cool, though. Yeah. I mean, that was like one of the, the things that it kind of forced you. It, it bottlenecked you from playing uh, the pods and stuff to just going and running the route of of collecting the hunts and mm-hmm. then doing the uh the bounties and and just doing those over and over again until you got like the opportunity you know with the hunt mm-hmm. you know using that little cheat where you could go in and then uh pick your uh you know drop off all of your quests and then you could just go to sell and look at the bag to see what you had to sell see your new item and if it wasn't what you right. wanted restart it like it, if if I could just get items from playing the game regularly, I would. But it was just so tough to get any kind of armor or anything like that. That that was the only way was turning in those hunt quests right. to get armor. That was the only guaranteed way. Yeah, that was like the only way that I could actually get the set that I wanted, and I had to do that for almost like two hours they, just trying to just I know. keep get running that one it piece you and wanted then just to get keep your trying to to, yeah. to restart and whatnot. You know, yeah, and that's like, such a shitty process, dude. Like you should hop that. back in, man, so we can play a little bit together again yeah. and, and do the pods because they also unlocked all legendaries. So that means before. Certain legendaries were locked behind like certain levels. So like mm. you couldn't get a certain item until you hit level 48. Right. Like some legendaries didn't become available in the pool mm-hmm. until you hit like level 48. Really? Yeah. They they said that in their post. Oh damn. So that means maybe that's why we could never find the one with the uh that's what the I'm special wondering. tier. That's what the I'm tier wondering. three mod that we were looking for. Another right? thing is too, um, they also made it that little boss farm we were doing. Yeah. They actually made that better. It's like they want it to work or something. They made Which it to boss where farm? Where you just start a level one, uh-huh. and you join, and you do the crystalless boss. Right, 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 right. For the three bosses, the three bosses you get a guaranteed you get weapon. You get a legendary each one. Yeah. Uh, they made that to where now every single helmet in the game will drop from those bosses, except a class helmet. So mm. every other helmet in the game will drop on okay. those bosses. What do you mean by a class helmet? Like specific to your guy Yeah, or like the pestilence helmet, or I think you – I'm not sure which one yours is, but like the ones that have like – or like the monarch – I have a set called a Monarch, mm-hmm. and it has it has class specific mods on it. Oh, okay. Meaning like 
this mod only I could use. Why would you want it? Like a frost mod. Like right. when I use frost snap uh -huh. and I kill them when they're in frost snapped, yeah. they explode. Okay. Why would you want that? You don't have frost snap. So that'd be clearly a class specific piece of gear. Okay. So every piece of every helmet that drops in the game that is not class specific mm -hmm. now drops from those bosses. Before oh, okay. it was just the cannonball helmet. Like that was the right. only one that would drop from them. Now all the helmets in the game drop. Okay. So they just done a lot of things, like a whole Have lot they of quality the of life of, things. Uh, what is it, titanium that you can get? Um, they gave you okay. Part of the two legendary gift packages came with titanium. Oh, okay. but I don't know if they increased the amount of titanium you get. But I do know they gifted some of that out for this appreciation pack hmm. with your two legendaries they gave you. Okay, they didn't so, give you pod resources either, did they? I don't think they gave you pod resources. Okay, just titanium. Because that's one of the most, you know, that's one of the hardest resources to collect. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the most difficult things, Absolutely. man. It's like when you've got to worry about titanium. All right, cool. But now you got to do pod resources too. So if you don't got the right gear, right, the to get like a good build. It's kind of hard to do pods and get like good resources. Totally, man. So, and it's like sometimes you can feel like, gosh, I feel like I have the build right. I feel like I have the pieces of gear that everyone says I should have, but I'm and I still can't kill it. Right? It's like, what am I doing wrong? You know? Yeah. And so that's the only or way you like can get me, pod resources. Or I was just, I was just trying to get the armor pieces. Right. Like I didn't even. I was trying to. For me, it took so many hunts and then having to like start and restart the game to get the that right pieces. I just wanted the damn pieces. Yeah. F a god roll or whatever or like a good a good ability I roll. I just yeah. want the damn armor. Right. So that I can at least do some of the build. Right. You know what I mean? So I mean, hopefully there's more than just helmets that drop. You know. No, the helmets more. is just for that run, for that which run, we can yeah. do that for fun if we want. But yeah. like I said, I got two legendaries from one. And you got an armor piece and a gun. An armor piece. It's like finally an armor piece. Right. Guns seem to drop quite a bit more. The for only me thing that I've armor. ever found was like, I mean, I found some of the cannonball stuff when I was doing the hunts. Right. And and some of the other pieces, but it's just like, damn, you know, the only other thing that you were getting just regularly out there was the cannonball mask. Yeah, because you can't really do a build without the armor pieces. Right. It's the armor pieces that really make the build. Your gun is important. Right. But it's the armor pieces that matter the most. And mm -hmm. it's like, I never had any of them. Like, I'm still looking for lots of pieces that I don't have. Yeah. I'm just kind of got, like, a jank build that's not – my build isn't maximized. Right. But it's, like, good enough to kind of, like, get me through. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I don't know. I think even though that little hunt trick will get you specific pieces, Yeah. I do think that this is probably going to be a better and more efficient way of farming, even if it's a random piece of gear every time you do the expedition. Yeah, but at least you're getting be you're getting titanium, you're getting resource pods, pods and you're getting right. possibilities for legendaries. Exactly. That's all I really want. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was trying to get legendaries. If I can only get one from a, a, a pod and then it's not even a possibility of armor, it's just guns, well, I need to get my set. So I got to go and do these damn hunts. But if I got a possibility of getting armor pieces now, then that makes it worthwhile. And if I'm at least more, uh, I have a better chance of getting legendaries when I complete the damn mission in the time Absolutely. that they want me that's gold tiered and looks legendary-ish. I shouldn't like, have to do I should eight be of able those. To get them. Yeah, I shouldn't have to do eight gold expedition runs right before one legendary drops for me right like that's absurd like i'm you know? finishing this this damn thing within 10 minutes like why aren't i getting a legendary exactly like it i should just be damn near guaranteed My... by finishing in the first tier you know yeah it's a gold tier the highest you can get and i'm just getting <laughs> blues and purples like it's frustrating <laughs> And you yeah. go multiple there runs without be, even getting one. Yeah, there should legit be no uh no vanilla and no green if you if you're hitting a gold tier. It should be all just purples. Pur like maybe not even blues. It should be a small finite like amount of blues. Like a few blues, but, but vast purples majority purples. And, and gold, you know? Yeah. What I mean? All purples and uh, chances for some gold. Yeah, because the thing is like we were talking before like the legendary pieces you get are cool and all, but we all want god rolls. So it's like even, yeah, they tell you like, I oh, get... you get the set, but like it doesn't stop there. Like you have to get these. Now you're trying to min max uh, abilities everything. on these sets, and it's like, damn, how's that possible? I, I there's nobody <laughs> to re-roll these things for me. Exactly. You know what I mean? All I can do is increase the stats that are already on my item. Like I can't re-roll these to try to, you know, like in a deem in like a. I don't know. I don't know if it was Dark Souls or something like that. But you know, like when you go to the uh, the forge and you just keep trying to re-roll for like a spec. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you just keep you keep going until you finally get the piece that you want or the uh, the the stat that you want. And it's like, okay, cool. You know, Neo is like that or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, so 
I, I wish it was just like that. You know, I don't mean spot. I don't mind spending the extra resources to try to re-roll a mm-hmm. stat that I didn't like for mm-hmm. something that I could really use on this item. But the fact that you guys give me the the rows of abilities I can use, and then I can't. I can only change one. I can't change both or whatever. And it's like okay, but the other ones I can't touch those. You know what I mean? If it's if it's health and and regen and something stupid, that, that's what I got. Until I yeah, get so it takes many, many it. drops before you finally get the piece you want. Right, right. And then even then, it might not be maxed. It's just like, okay, this actually has the things I want. Right. But the percentages may They're not ass. be the highest yeah. that I wanted on them. Right. So a lot of little things, man, make it hard to grind. And so, like you said, I think like with this update, mm-hmm. it might finally be worth like playing again. Like I might get a little lost in Outriders this week playing that. Right. You know, slacking on other games I have to play just because, like, it might be quite a bit of fun to play mm-hmm. that game again. Right, right, right. Um, because I had a lot of fun last night. It was really cool getting two legendaries in one go. Yeah. And I was like, damn, that makes me want to play more. You know? Yeah, you should have so, hit me because I know you were asking me what I was playing or whatever. But yeah, you didn't hit me to say, you, like, oh, play on I knew on you this. were trying to get – we'll get to this right now. I'll yeah, ask you yeah. in a minute what you were playing. But um, I, I I at least wanted to see if you'd hop in and see. I wanted to know what legendary <laughs> guns you got because <laughs> yeah. I was curious. But well, I guess we'll find out today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll, uh, I'll that was the only thing that. that I really wanted to know. Mm-hmm. And then maybe tonight we can, like, play or something. Yeah. But anyways, I'll go ahead and jump into it, man. What you been, what you been doing? What you been playing? Uh, so, uh, I had like a pretty eventful weekend as far as what I was trying to do. So my, my main goal was to finish off Ratchet and Clank, um, and, and see how much I could get. So I actually got like, um, I don't know if the percentages ever even incorporate, uh, trophies Collections into and stuff. it Collecting. Yeah, because yeah. I was like at 99%, uh, with the game. So, uh, I'm not sure exactly what I was missing to get the hundred percent. See, I was at Unless 97. they control it. Okay. So I'm not sure if they say Did you have like, every single screw? Uh, The bolts? The bolts? No, I didn't get all the bolts. Yeah, see, neither did I. Okay. You probably got more bolts than me, which is why you're probably at 99. I got 22 out of 25 I think I got bolts. 18. Okay. So, so you got a few more bolts than me, so that's probably why you got 99 out of 100, mm-hmm. and I got 97 out of 100. Yeah, maybe that's um, why. I finished I all of the I didn't prioritize the bolts. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. I didn't quite... I didn't prioritize them because there wasn't any cool grand reward like there was for the spy bots. Oh, okay. I really wanted. Well, the spy how'd you bots. find out about the spy bots reward? Is it because she said it or something, mm-hmm. and yeah. you paid attention they to it? They said it. Oh, okay. When I first got one, they told you, if you find them all, I'll create the ultimate weapon for you. Like oh. that's what the spy bots were. They were, they were plans for an ultimate weapon. Got you. Okay. I never listened to their their little monologue, the tape. Did you listen to the tape? No. Uh-uh. Yeah, I didn't care. I just wanted the plans. And right. if you look, if you go to the spy bot tab, you can see it's filling up for the plans. For the plans, I got you can you. see every piece, every spy bot you got was added in a new square. Right, right, to right. the plans. Did you end up getting all of them? Yeah, yeah, I got, got the Rhino Eight. I got or that thing. Yeah, yeah, the Rhino Eight, which opens up a portal and Dude, that thing was shit nasty. Did you use it on the boss? I did use it on the boss. It was but taking like multiple percentages. Points. I messed up. So like when I was getting towards the very end of the game, um. You know, it it goes to where you have to uh to talk to Captain Quantum, um, or you can go to the arena and do the arena, right. or you know, go off and finish some stuff on and the and start other world. the last thing. So I left out of there, and then I went. I walked out of the building, and I just happened to check my map, and I was like, "Oh shit, there's a there's a spy bot over here." Dude, that's here the one I couldn't find on the either, corner. bro. So I turned. And then I just, you know, hooked and shot, slingshot it over there. Yeah. And then I got it. But, like, I had done, like, the freaking, um, I had done the arena. I had finished the arena all the way. And then I had uh, gone to uh, the chick, the the woman, to, to uh, uh, upgrade my stuff, right? So I had, like, mad coins after doing all of the arena. Right. So I just bought the last couple weapons. And then... Um, I started throwing upgrade crystals, the the rare tanium, into other stuff, and then I looked on the map, oh, and, you and then the I was rhino. like, "Oh shit, like, crap! I there's have a no spy a spy bot out there." Yeah, so when I got it, I only had like six or seven. Oh, so, okay. and then I had already done the arena, so it wasn't like I could have used that rhino you, eight to increase my did you do my gun. What Mark did and upgraded all your guns to level five. Uh, I've upgraded quite a few to level five. Not I all of them. Upgraded quite but... a few level five too. But I still had quite a bit of rare titanium. Like even after I got the Rhino Eight, yeah, I still had enough to like constantly level it up as I leveled it up. Mm. So I had. I mean, I was I was literally trying to clear every map of the rare titanium 
pods mm-hmm. that were on the map that were shown. Um, and there was a couple that I missed on some of the maps. Did you end up having like a favorite gun? Uh, yeah, I actually had two. Um, the glove of doom was dude, by far my favorite doom, dude. because uh, basically my only downfall on that was I can't hit flying things. Yeah, but it was so cool. But so I maxed that out. So the sure. glove, the glove of doom, basically um, allows you to throw these little balls out that like pokeballs or whatever that summon like three or four dogs. They're kind um, of like little, little, me- little guys. metal, metal yeah. dogs or something like yeah. that that go and they chomp everything that's on the floor. Anything that is an enemy, if it walks, it's getting taken down by the gloves of doom. And so uh, after you max it out at from level five, excuse me, to all of the little um, upgrades and stuff in there, you're able to thump out like four or five per dogs throw. Per, per throw. Yeah. And you're able to get five throws you have like 40, if you max out. You have like 20 of those dudes running around out there. <laughs> yeah. So they army, literally, they like flood Pikmin. and they stay. Yeah. They stay for a long time. It's like they don't go until they die themselves. Right. It's so like these guys aren't disappearing until someone kills them. Right. Right. Because they, they transport or with they you. Or they get hit or something. Like, they, yeah. They go with you wherever you right, go. Right. They'll just yeah. appear to the next platform wherever you're in. Yeah. It's like once I saw those, I kind of stopped using the fungi. But because the bunk because those guys are so dope. But the Mr. Fungal hits the error, hits the error, error right. stuff. So that's my second right. favorite one because I right. throw those down. You get two at a time for each throw, and I think you get like six or seven. And so you're able to just throw them out there. So literally on the uh the arenas, just throw your I'll throw out. the dogs and then I'll throw the, the fungals, fungi. and then they just take care of like all the other shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, like boss fights, I'll throw those down there. So when I was fighting um uh nefarious i just threw all of those down there so anytime anything came out of the portals the dogs ate them up and then uh the freaking the fungals was shooting at him in the air um but uh yeah those were my two favorite ones my third favorite one was probably did you have any favorite guns like something you shot yeah the uh it's the uh the spark one the purple one that that shoots like the three prong uh yeah lightning tips Dude, and it and it electrifies them and, and and holds them down once you killed one it chained yeah 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 that one so it's just nice because you can just shoot it a couple of times and then he'll get electrified whoever even you're the shooting bo- even, even the, the boss, boss yeah yeah and then they just stop moving to attack you you know what I mean while they're getting electrocuted and you could just keep laying into them and then the fact that you had the tracking so it was like as long as you were in a general vicinity it was hitting you know what I mean yeah. you could keep running and stuff like that that was nice uh, I, I like the gun, other dude. one the Gatling gun I like that one a lot too the, the, the black, black hole, hole storm or something like that I use that that was like really good for like pumping out damage quickly yeah 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 and just but spraying down like massive i also crowds. really liked the razor blade one too i maxed that to the five. razor i maxed the razor blade i would just too. like sling the, that the fact that it was just and just constantly <laughs> chopping things yeah, up. yeah yeah it was dope like it was shredding things up pretty quickly right, right but right. for bosses the black hole was like dope yeah and then like just for taking out large groups of mobs that, 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 that the the uh, lightning one was yeah. just sick because you have a whole group of dogs running at you. The lightning kills all of them. Yeah, because one, one shot. shot kills them, and then when he dies, it chains. Yeah, and chains to everything. <laughs> so it's like just a few rounds, and right. the whole room's destroyed. Right. You know, and like I said, what I was doing was I would shoot until like a bigger guy would light up, mm-hmm. and I run up there and just melee him to death. Oh, okay. and then he would chain melee, chain melee. Yeah. I was just having a ton of fun with the lightning gun. That was like clearly my favorite gun. Right. And then uh, on bosses, the hand of doom and the fungi were like a ton of fun. Yeah, man. Because you just like whenever I came across a boss, okay, just throw just throw my army if out. If I dude, if I have a good section of land, yeah, they're coming you just out. Throw everything out, and you yeah. know you're gonna get through it. Right. You know, so like, ton of really really cool, man. Yeah, for sure. So you ended up, you did get to the end and you saw the ending. Yeah, yeah, I did. I saw the ending and everything. So I thought it was cool. Um, But I mean, we could get into like a a detailed review of of it. Um, That'll probably be on our Patreon. So watch out for that. If you guys want to drop a dollar in there or something like that, you know, it'll be on there to see. Yeah. Um, In the coming, in the coming weeks. I think probably like maybe by next week. We'll let you know when the review is up. Right. And then, yeah, if you want to toss a dollar to check that out. You yeah, get, get sure. our in-depth review and our score, the yeah. WLG score yeah, um, for sure. on that game. So other than that, um, you were kind enough to let me right. borrow Returnal um, when I came over for your graduation mm-hmm. party. 
And so I, uh, after I finished Ratchet, I immediately put in Returnal. And I totally see what you guys were talking about with it being a comparison as far as like the shooting and all of that stuff. Ratchet, and, like, right? The feel, yeah. Yeah. Because you got the dashing. You've got, you know, you're just shooting and trying to avoid the bullets while you're it's keeping the exact your sights same reticle down. kind of thing. Yeah, third yeah. Person. So, I mean, uh, Returnal is, uh, it's interesting. Like, I've only gotten a chance to go into the house once, uh, popping up, and I uh, I looked out a window, saw a spaceman, and then... See, I haven't even been in the house yet. I played it no? more than you. You haven't walked outside the house because you didn't Whenever, care? I've saw the what? house quite a few times, but when I was first encountering the house, I told you I had that bug, where mm -hmm. for some reason it said the game is still downloading. I oh, have to wait yeah, until yeah, the yeah. game's fully downloaded before I can enter. Right. And I didn't bother with it because I just wanted to keep playing anyways. Yeah. And I didn't fix that bug until I came across the bug from my portal when I was trying to move to the biomes that I had finished. Mm -hmm. I couldn't move into them because the portal said the game was not done downloading. So that's when I fixed it. Yeah. So whenever I came across the home, I, w I couldn't enter it. And then when I did fix the bug and I came across the home, I still didn't want to enter it because I just wanted to keep playing. So I actually have not entered the home, not even once yet. Oh, okay. But you got the key. You just I got the key. I just in. haven't entered it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've 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 seen the house uh, look good once. Once you actually get out of it, um, uh, then the house looks raggedy, and then you can't ever walk into it. Hmm. Um, at least for me, I haven't been able to walk into it yet. I am still stuck in the first biome. Uh, I guess because yeah, I'm the first so boss yeah, I'm so kind of like. <clears throat> clueless as far as like I, I was thinking that the biomes were like a couple of small areas or something. No, like I told that. you they're massive. But they're pretty freaking. Remember huge. I was telling you that. I said they're massive. They're too yeah. long. Yeah, they're really long. So it's like uh I've had the glorious uh luck to like run into rooms that be like two rooms in. And there's like massive shit out there, and then doors lock, and then it's like, oh, see, that's what, what I was the trying hell to ask am I Mark. going to do? He was talking about how he just runs through all the rooms, and I'm like, but how do you do that when you get into a locked room? Right. Because those happen, and those are like really tough. And if you don't I've have gotten, a good gun, yeah, that's that's the that. So that's my biggest gripe about it is that it's like, damn, it takes so long to find like a good gun. Like it seems like I you start off with that little pistol. And the pistol's cool, but it shoots slow, and it doesn't hit as hard as you would like it to. And then when you find an upgrade, it's like the same pistol, but maybe with a little bit more power. And it's like, damn, I wish I had a variation. And then, uh, like, sometimes I'll come across the shotgun, and it's like, oh, the shotgun hits hard, but you got to be up on shit. I'm not trying to be up on shit. I don't like shit. the shotgun. So the shotgun just doesn't do me any good. So the literally the only gun that's, like, really good is the carbine, which I found, like, on my second go or my, my first or my second go and then never again have i found the carbine really or the tachometer and that's been the only one that the tachometer, i can really i don't like the wind up on it uh it's not crazy, it slows up it's a little slow to f start rolling right oh to, to start spinning yeah, quick to start spinning yeah yeah, quick. yeah. yeah it it's, but it's okay bit. it's better than the pea shooter i'm just saying it kind of annoys me Mm -hmm. Where like for me the carbine is just the best gun. The that carbine I come is nice, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, dope! I found this weapon." I'm thinking that like with the cutscene and shit, I get to like keep. Have the Have you weapon. found the sword yet? I found. I finally found the sword. So like, so the sword is what I use in the beginning. What do you mean? I kill all the enemies with the sword. Just do so you? you know? You just run up on everything. Mm -hmm. So like, I'll just be sprinting. I'll see an enemy. I'll dodge, kill it, run around. Like I just keep moving. Oh, I'll okay. keep sprinting around the map so they yeah. can't really hit me. I'll run around guy, get him to him, dodge, dodge. And I'm just like, you know, I'm just like a ninja. And like, that's how I play early in the game because hmm. the sword will one shot all the guys. Okay. The things that are annoying are those flying dudes. And when they those beam in annoying. on you yes. and there's like four of them and there's nowhere to hide, Dude. that is frustrating. And now I've realized that you can shoot the one that's beaming. And it'll He'll stop, stop beaming. beaming you, but, but then the problem another is, one is that there's so you. many. And then if they get close, they glow red and then they come in and then they attack you. And it's just like, damn. And sometimes you really just don't have the room. But it, they're, so e they're so much easier to take down if you have a tachyometer or a carbine. Well, that's what I was trying. That's why I use the door cheese. Remember Mark was talking about yeah, the yeah, door Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you run behind the door, the door will close. I use that a that's lot. That's what I that do with those flying lot. guys. But the problem is any of those things that Mark said made the game easy – are not usable in those locked rooms. Right. And you have the red orb in the middle. Yeah. Like, it's not easy. Like, those rooms, in my opinion, aren't easy. I wouldn't use the word easy, and especially if you don't have the right weapon. 
and I don't, I don't, uh, I guess because I haven't played enough or whatever, or been able to do things enough, I don't understand the concept of those rooms, but I do know that that red orb eventually turns into a big ass beast. And then it's like, I don't know how you uh, stop the chant or the, the, you know, the coming of it or whatever. You can't. Like, it's just so, like I was telling you in the text messaging, as you like kill enemies, it feeds the orb. Does it? Yeah, so as you're killing enemies, it feeds the orb. And then once ah. you've killed enough, the orb unlocks the, the boss. Oh, okay. You cannot do anything to avoid that room. <laughs> you have to kill the boss. Yeah, because you're locked in. And uh, there's also another fun room that has that, that green pillar in the back that just sends off waves of green. And it's like a, a constant healing wave. So right. that whatever you, whenever you, however much you shoot the enemies, you can throw everything at them, your heavy blast shot, it don't fucking, it does not matter. They will regen immediately. So you have to literally blitz through, find the pillar, destroy the pillar, and then try to take down the things. Yes. But the moment you get deep in there, the doors lock on you. So if you can't get enough room to shoot that pillar down, you know what I mean? You're kind of stuck. But I have noticed that once I shoot the pillar down, the room becomes unlocked. And then I can right. play the door game. So I just have to... I haven't started playing the door, door game with that because right. I just hide behind pillars mm -hmm. and try to shoot down the beamers before they get me. You know what I mean? And right. and it's, it's nice because the room is is wide and it has the gaping hole in the middle so it doesn't allow the big the big creature that's in there to just chase you down super quick right it has to run around so it allows just me to think, kite it and then kill all the small shit before i just I kill think him. like those rooms with the red orb in the middle are a little too hard for like the first biome in my opinion for sure and have you fallen down a yellow bro i brick? have a couple and was there I a have boss not, down there i have not come across a boss yet Dude, it i came across so often to me i came across a dope room where they have those little purple pods down there mm -hmm. and you just bust them and then there's like all kinds of little items were dropped in mm -hmm. so it was the little malignant m malignant things mm -hmm. and then the other ones that you could get the orange joints uh so i was collecting those like water and i understand now why the malignants can be bad it's because the once you yeah the malfunctions because once you have two malfunctions you can't have three malfunctions right. so if you try to put one on it just destroys it mm -hmm. so i see why but uh mark was right it doesn't really like uh it's nothing really crazy that just like damages you mm -hmm. and it seems like it's fairly easy to get rid of them if you wanted to, you know. Yeah, I just came across a couple that were tough, like the one that had re the uh, um, the thorn type of thing. The thorn that one was that one was, was crazy. Hard. I haven't come across that one yet. Yeah, but most of the yeah. ones I've come across that's were the only something one. Weak, yeah, for the most know? part, it's like kill this many enemies with your sword, or yeah, or this will drop a pile of energy when you kill it. Like, yeah, yeah, I agree. The poison the, the poison yeah, pools or whatever. Poison I've pools. Seen like those, it's yeah. like for the most part, it doesn't hinder the game. But there are a couple. I'm telling you, like that thorn one. Yeah, I, I'm sure there are, dude. Like yeah. that ended my run. Getting that malignancy ended my run, dude. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, I wasn't realizing that, like you know, because like when you're first going in, nothing, like you were saying, nothing is explained, right? So you you walk right. into one of those like triangle, blue triangle rooms. I always know those are the good rooms, so I'll beeline it straight to those rooms or whatever after I've killed the enemies to to see what they've got, mm -hmm. and then you know proceed to get to the, the green rooms or whatever. But um, I've gone to the room where it has like this like almost like it looks like it's like a, a tomb or something like that. And then there's like a long table. And then I guess there's a different color lights that would be on the head of it. So there's green, which means that you can lay down on it and you can gain health and energy and you're good. Like there's no problems. Mm -hmm. And then there's a red, an orange one that you can go and lay on and it will guarantee that you will lose health. But it gives you some type of resources. I never noticed the resources that I got. It's so, probably the uh, obliterate uh, or oblates, the um, oblates ether or, or whatever. Oblates or something like that, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, yeah or the but ether. I, so I don't know what resources it was giving me. All I know is I laid on both of them. <laughs> and one of them fucked my health up. We well, like, need to do one before half. the other. Yeah. So. Right, yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, I basically the first time I laid on one, it was a green one, and I laid down on it, and then you know it's like the little cutscene or whatever. She lays down right. on the table and sits. So I had put my controller down to take a sip of some water or whatever, and then she wakes up, and so I'm thinking, you know, the room's gonna be empty and shit. No, she wakes up, and then there's like three of those bat shits in there, and I'm like, oh, fuck, like I'm trying to go grab the controller and then <laughs> fight these shits without dying, you know what I mean? And it's like, damn, like I did not expect that. So I was like, I was startled a little bit, like, dude, this is supposed to 
supposed to be just a cutscene. You know what I mean? I wasn't supposed to freaking so, pop up with some shit into a blue room. But Did you remember that I told you that your guns you find are upgraded based on your weapon profici- proficiency? So at the bottom left corner where your little status bar and stuff is, uh huh, there's that little white bar at the bottom. Yeah. That's like a one and it goes to like two and three. Right. As you're shooting things, your weapon proficiency goes up and that levels up. Uh-huh. And then every item you get at that point in time is going to have that many stats based on your current weapon pro- proficiency number. Is that is that so, what that three or that two or that one is on the top right when you're looking at the gun? It'll uh, it'll show oh, the like star a star or whatever. Or something yes, like that? that's based on your weapon proficiency. Okay, but does that reset every time you no, die? You're, you know, the, yeah, the, yes. Everything resets when you die, man. Right. You take nothing with you. I'm telling you. Right. You get the old pea shooter back, and even your. The weapon, pro- the weapon proficiency, all of it resets. Yeah. So the, Which is a bummer. What they recommend is not opening chest up until you're like at least like a three or so weapon proficiency. Uh-huh. But that means you're stuck with that pea shooter. Right. Like, I don't know how these people are like doing this game so quickly with that pea shooter, the base pea shooter, like right. for so long. Because that thing is like, if you just happen, like you said, to get unlucky and run into the red room. You mm-hmm. got to fight everything with that pea shooter. And that's like very hard. Yeah. What is it called? The vault or something like that? Something. I don't know the name there's, of it. There's like a couple of rooms that I've realized that if you just go into them, there's a shit storm waiting behind there. Yeah. So like the rooms with the stars on top, I don't fuck with those yeah, if I don't I have what, what I need. Yeah. Uh, the red room with the vault symbol um, on top of it, them bitches be but tough. But sometimes you can't move forward in the, unless at you all get unless that. you move yeah. through it, which is right. why it's like there's no choice. I can't get stronger unless I move through it. So right. like, you're stuck. But that is a um, a good thing to to think about, you know, just like holding on to some of the chests and stuff like that. Because once but, you crack, because the chests usually have weapons in them, so right. once you crack it, it's gonna crack at your current weapon proficiency, which is low. Right. But I mean, you could crack them to get a better gun, like a different type of gun. Yeah, but, but it's you not don't have know what's in it. there. You don't know what gun is right. in there. You know what I, I mean? Know. Like yeah. if I'm still stuck RNG. with the peace shooter, shooter, I want a So have if, you have you got to the boss yet? I have gotten to the boss, and it was pretty. Tough, and I've right? gotten, I've gotten one down. But did you see what I'm saying with the health bars? It resets the health yeah, bar yeah, every yeah. time. Yeah, Because he's got yeah. three, he's got three pegs and a full health bar. Right. So, but um, I'd say that the bosses are fairly simple, I guess, or whatever. But the problem I have is that I don't have, I don't ever have a proper gun to go in the fight with. When I go to the boss, like I don't have the carbine or I don't have the tachometer to go in there with the fight. I end up having the pea shooter when I come across the boss. And it's just like, well, damn, where am I supposed to go to get a a good gun? Because all I get is like a shotgun upgrade or I get another pistol. So it's like I don't want those. They shoot too slow or the shotgun isn't proficient Mm -hmm. enough from far away. Like I need to keep my distance to keep moving. Can you see what I'm saying, though? Like how, let's say you made it to biome four on this run uh-huh. and you die. Yeah. How like demoralizing? Because each biome is so dang long mm-hmm. that it took you like four hours, five hours to get to biome four, and then you die and have to do it all over again. Well, that's a problem for me. I can't, I can't see it yet because I haven't beaten a boss. You to haven't know even what done biome one from. yet. Right, I haven't I haven't come across I haven't beaten the boss and then been able to proceed past it to see what's in store. Like what do you have? I haven't been able to see, you know, like what you were saying, how you could just beeline it, excuse me, straight to the next section. Um once you beat the boss, you can beeline like it, but you can't really beeline it because you need to get because biome two is harder than biome one. Uh-huh. So you need to have gear ready for that zone. And so you have to go through the biome to collect upgrades and stuff. Right. You don't have to beat the boss again, no. Right. But you still have to clear the biome in a yeah, sense. Yeah, you still have to have some good gear to be able to go through and right. stuff like that. Yeah. So um I mean there's there's definitely some problems with that. Um it seems like um in some rooms, you can run through some things, but the majority of them that I've come across, you had to kind of like finish the room out in order to open up both pathways. Like there'd be a pathway lock. You have you to finish that. Them off. Right. I was finally glad that I was able to see how you defeat the red, the red domed or red shielded 
uh, turrets and stuff like that. You have to you swipe, with your, swipe sword, right. with your sword and stuff. And I was glad that I didn't have to beat the boss in order to get the sword because there were so right. many items that were behind vine walls that right. I was just like, damn, how do I get to these? But I'm guessing I have to beat the boss in order to get the grappling hook to be able to reach those higher. Uh, I haven't uh, even got the areas. grappling. You get the grappling hook in three, I believe, in biome three. Jeez. Oh, it's so weird that they give you like all of these different areas and items will be up there for you to grab, but you don't have the stuff to do it. Right. And it's random. So it's like you could you could have like superb items up there, but you just cannot get mm -hmm. up there. So it's just like, damn, well, that RNG roll was wasted. I just you know? think it's too much. This is why I stand by my opinion that I wish it was more souls like than roguelite mm -hmm. because um, you just keep what you found. And you keep moving forward. Yeah. And like you died at the boss, but you could just try it again and mm -hmm. try it again and try it again until you kill it and then move on to biome two yeah. and take the hour you spent in biome one, do that again in biome two and then kill the boss. It might take a few tries, mm -hmm. but just like, just like Dark Souls. Yeah. And you kill the boss eventually and you keep moving. You keep trugging forward. I would love that at least for the weapons, man. Cause I, that's literally you what I feel like my over, issue man. is with. It's nothing just the over. weapons, the, the fact that I, I have to like, Start again with the pissant weapon. You know what I mean? If I could start with the, you know, the good weapon that I found and I just have to regain proficiency to make it stronger, I'm fine with that. But at least like I found this carbine, you guys give me a dope cutscene for it, and then I don't get to keep it. Nope. Like it seems like that should just be acquired. You know what I mean? Nope. That should be new equipment. But nothing carries over. That's just a problem with the game. Yeah. Like so. it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's interesting it's polished it's pretty it's exciting i definitely it's see how you're on story. it for like hours and hours at a time because yeah can, but you, you don't even make any progress you're on it for hours and hours at a time you make no progress so that's my beef with it like mm -hmm. you're on it for hours and hours at a time and you make no progress so all you get out of it is just the simple joy of playing it which is fun but i i want progress man i need to make progress i wish there was something that helped make progress like, you've died all this time. Wouldn't it be cool, like, every time you died, there was at least something that was making you a little stronger for the next run, a okay. little better for the next one? So I did have uh, some weird things that have happened to me, and I was hoping that you could explain them to me. Um, there's been times where, like, I died in a boss fight, in the boss fight or whatever, mm -hmm. and I revived in the boss fight. Yes. And it says second chance. That is what the is that? astronaut figurine. Oh, is that what that is? So when you find the figurine of the little astronaut, yeah. that, revive, that, that resurrects you. Oh, okay. Because I yeah. found it twice. Yes. And that's happened. And I was like, yo, what the hell just happened? Like, you know, and I'm full health and I'm able yeah, to go again. That's the astronaut figurine. Okay. That's what I found when I first visited the house. And then oh, I, I passed figurine? out and then I woke up outside the house. And then there was an astronaut figure sitting there. And I picked it up. And it doesn't say anything. It just says it'll always stay with you or something like that. And oh. I was like, the hell is this okay. for? So that's Did you cool. find the mold, that, that, that they get checkpoint mold? No. Where it's like a big yeah, yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. you kind of you slip but I never it have, closes But I never you. have ether or ether or whatever to yeah, get into. I know. I, it's like, what I know. Mark is talking that? like he has the full ether. ether. Never, the, the ether I'm never like, drops okay. like that. He said he had so. full ether, but like, it's hard, man. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's why like... I was just when like Mark said it's easy, but I don't know. In my opinion, it's not necessarily that easy. There are some aspects that are easy, mm -hmm. and he's right. There are some things you can cheese, but that it's easy. I don't know if I would quantify it necessarily as like easy. You know, only only sixty percent. I read a stat. Only uh, sixty percent of the people who have played Returnal have beaten by on one. That means mm -hmm. almost half, almost half of everyone who's played that game can't beat even by on one. Damn. Let alone bin it, finishing it into biome six yeah and in my opinion i think that's why it has such a hardcore fan base a hardcore hardcore like venomous fan base mm -hmm. because when i've gotten on certain youtube videos and i've left comments about my feelings on the game i've gotten like major hate you know you don't like, know what you're, you're talking about <laughs> like you're insane you're an idiot um yeah. just major hate mm -hmm. um and it's like dude man like why is it so personal to you like why do you feel like I'm personally attacking you. And the only thing I can come up with is they are so proud that they beat it. Right? Like mm -hmm. it was such an accomplishment and it, it was so impactful that they were able to do like what no one else did. It became like one of their favorite games because they accomplished it and they did what the no one else could do. So because of that become, they come these staunch defenders of it. 
because they feel like you're shitting on their uh, their, their honor, accomplishment. Their, their yeah, their accomplishment. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe. I think that's the uh, subconscious the same... psychology as to why people are s- a certain facet of this community is so venomous about anyone who knocks the game at all. It could be the same with like uh, Dark Souls, you know, because you know we hear we hear yeah. people say like, "Oh, Dark Souls is like super hard," and it's like. No, it's not hard. You just like you just have to keep at it, but you you, you literally get better. Well, like, and also, as you're playing, it's inevitable. You will get absolutely. better. Absolutely. And and my love for it, some of that might stem from my accomplishment of beating it. Yeah. Right? Like But we're just not like hardcore might, like telling yeah, but people I'm not like, your opinion. I'm not is crap telling someone like a moron or an idiot. I'm not like in faulting people because And that they, that might just be it. a couple of people just talking crazy on the But I just think because can, it's but. so hard to fully beat and so few pu- people have done it yeah. that the ones that do do it end up becoming a little elitist in their opinion about it. Yeah, but I um, mean, like, more power to the people that freaking uh, were able to beat it. I mean, I, I, I'm definitely feeling like Biome 1 is more of a challenge just trying to get through it. I feel like the boss can be beat if I had the right gun because I was noticing that I could avoid a lot of its attacks by hiding on the edges of the uh the battle arena because mm. there's like a little lip wall or something like that that you could totally be behind and dodge it um like all of the incoming attacks right so that you don't even have to like move or anything you just like peek behind the wall and, and keep blasting it down so if i could figure out a good if i could get a good gun and go in there with that you know what i mean but yeah i, I might i might try to do that like not open up chests and just leave i them. beat the I beat him my first go, so I don't mm. know the room. Would you beat well him enough. with a pea shooter? No, I had a carbine. Okay, I didn't have a pea shooter. You had the carbine. No. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think once you explore like every single room, you'll find probably a carbine. Yeah, but sometimes, like you said, it's complete RNG. Like you might run into the big room, the red room. Yeah. Second go, and it's like you're stuck with the little pea shooter. Good luck, you know. Which is why for me, like the sword really helps. Mm-hmm. But still, it's like crazy hard. Can man. those can those big red guys be beaten with the sword? You can swipe them with the sword, but they, like they, how many hits one is it shot. gonna take? They take more shots than one. Uh huh. But um, because I haven't, I haven't really the been red using room, melee Sometimes on the them. red room has a green guy in it, like the plant, like Groot. Yeah. Have you seen those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those Some, guys. Those ones actually are really easy to beat with the sword. Oh, are if they? If you just hit them with the sword, they kind of like stun lock them, mm. and then like they won't attack you anymore okay. and then they'll teleport, you know, to another location right. and then just run them down and then swipe them with the sword again. The re- It's the red ones, the red, like, you know, yeah, yeah, crawling yeah. Uh, panthers or whatever you want to call them right. that are really hard to beat Yeah, with the, uh, cause they, they have faster moving projectiles when they shoot Yeah, and they take a lot of hits with the so sword. They're, they're faster than the, the turrets. Yeah. They shoot they're really way fast. faster than the yeah. turrets. So it's just like, damn, I mean, you know, the turrets, you can kind of like, move forward uh let it you know aggro it to shoot in your direction and then jump over it mm-hmm. and do a dash and then get close to it so you can hit it but like i'm gonna, I'm gonna have to try to play it and use my utilize my sword a little bit more and see how that works but i feel like if you're using your sword you're not getting your weapon proficiency up so uh, thinking of yourself do you have the patience to beat a game like this do i have the patience to do you see yourself having enough patience and enough hours in your life to beat this game. I don't know if I'll have enough hours to be able to beat it within a timely fashion, but I do have the patience to play it. I mean, if to I play if it, I I'm know, talking about beating it. Yeah, I know if I All can six slowly miles. Yeah, if I know I can slowly whittle away the areas um where the bosses, you know, like slowly whittle away the bosses, then I'll keep going at it. But as far as like how much time it's gonna take, like I might I might put it on rest to play something else for a while because it takes so much time. Do you to think be able someday you'll beat? You're gonna come back to this a year from now and play it? And I think so. I mean, the game really? is fun. The game is fun. It's just you know it's a little it's tough. You know what I mean it's it's like uh, it's not it's not necessarily it's not just based upon skill. It's skill and luck. You got to have the luck to get mm-hmm. the weapons and stuff that you need. And then you got to use that with your skill to be able to progress. Or you just have superb skill and you're able to just get away with like having shit luck and, you know, and then being able to finesse everything. Yeah, I think part of it is And I'm skill. trying to I'm trying to figure out how to finesse everything because I feel like that's the key. Finessing the situation is the key. So it's like 
okay, tr- trying to figure it out. But I just feel like the pea shooter is like, it's such a uh, like a, a trash gun that if I just had something that shot a little bit faster, you know what I mean? I, I think what matters it. more necessarily than the gun is the weapon levels, the weapon proficiency. Uh-huh. Because if you find even a pea shooter with uh, damage bonuses on it, yeah. It's much better. Like a plus four or something like that? Like the four star or yeah, something but else? A, pl- a, f- a four star, but every one of those stars is a is a square. Oh, okay. You know how there's like four or five stats, um, four or five attributes on the gun, like speed, um, right. damage, um, uh, range, or right. whatever? Right, yeah. Um, every gun you come across has um, a square nodule filled in on one of those attributes Mm -hmm. based on your weapon proficiency so every gun starts off as a one star right if you have a three proficiency then every gun you find will be like a four or five star gun Mm -hmm. and those four additional stars from that first one are nodes that get put into oh so that's what determines what has more nodes or not and so that's completely random too so not only is it random what guns you'll find but it's random what nodes you'll get filled in on that gun yeah if you happen to find let's say a three or four star pea shooter but like three out of the four stars are into damage Mm -hmm. that thing's gonna be nasty right even as a pea shooter, it's going to be like nasty, nasty. The only stat that really matters in the game is damage. Mm. That's only the only stat that matters. Right. So, yeah, there's a ton of RNG. And I don't know. I just think like like Colin Moore, you already said it was a full-time job because he finally ended up beating it. Uh-huh. But like he dedicated like 80 hours, almost 100 <laughs> hours to beat it. Damn. And it's like I just think that's like ridiculous in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, for sure. But um, definitely uh, Returnal is fun. I'm still uh, on the fence as to whether I feel like it was, you know, worthy of the, the $70 title at, um, to not get into it. You know what I mean? But like, you know, it being like $70, but I definitely think it's a good game. I mean, it sure. looks good. And it Hades plays was a good, good game. Yeah. Haiti looked good. Haiti played good. Right. So, Would I pay know. 70 for it? No. Right. So, um, you know, I probably have to play a little bit more and determine whether or not, you know, I feel like it would be worth it. I guess I guess it's all it's all subject to my opinion. Right. Because if I couldn't if I can't get past by one, do I think it was worth 70 dollars? Nah, because it's like I can't even play the damn thing. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm just wasting time. Yeah. But so. I'm talking, of course, you know. Ultimately, everyone's going to say to me it was worth it. But I'm talking about having a objective uh, definition of what a $70 game should be or should should include, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Just like I think we have an objective understanding in our society what a movie is. A movie is not an episode, right? A movie is... A movie is not a TV series. A movie is something else. And we all know what that means. It has certain attributes that are accompanied with it Mm -hmm. that quantify it as a movie. Right. Right. And so we pay this much money for a movie, even if it was a bad movie. If it has certain objective quantities, length, you know, characters, budget, certain things it has, we all agree. Everyone on the whole planet, the whole country agrees that's a movie. And then when you see something on television that's a 30-minute show or a sitcom, very shallow in length, very shallow in depth, and in because um, it's an episode, it's not a feature length, we know that's an episode. Or if it's like a, sh- a series on Netflix and it's mm-hmm. like 45, 50 minutes, an hour long, that's a series. We all know. It's, qu- it's an objective thing we all agree on. We all know. And I'm just thinking that we need to kind of have that in gaming. Because it stands right now, it sounds like everyone's just like, well, if it's worth it to me, it's like, well, whatever, fine. Pay 70 bucks for a roguelike. That's whatever you want. I'm just saying I think that there should be some objective thing we point to. That's a AAA game versus that's not a AAA game. That's more what I'm talking about. Yeah, there isn't there isn't uh, anything that I've seen that was like a defined definition of what makes a AAA game. But... You know, maybe there eventually will be. I'm just saying we as a community, that would really help in determining what something's worth. Not just if I feel it, not just a feel like what I feel, but 
what is a triple A and what isn't. Yeah. And we kind of have that to a degree. Like everyone agrees Far Cry 6 is a triple A game. Why? What are the what are the immutable by immutable I mean objective characteristics that that game has that Hades doesn't? Yeah. Right? That's all I'm saying. What does that have that Hades doesn't? Even if I think Hades is a better game and I liked it more and it was prettier and it was more fluid and I enjoy it more than I end up enjoying Far Cry 6, mm -hmm. I still feel that Far Cry 6 is a $70 game and Hades isn't a $70 game. For what? It has certain immutable characteristics. We all would agree. There's certain aspects about it that none of us would argue make it a AAA title where Hades isn't. Mm -hmm. why, why is, in my opinion, Returnal allowed to do that? Why is Eternal allowed to be a Hades, but charge what Far Cry 6 has and not offer what Far Cry 6 offers? Yeah. I that's don't know. All, that's, my, have to, that's my beef with it. I'd have to do some more research and see if maybe they were able to pull some big budget, you know, by getting money from Sony or something like that, you know, and it, all of a sudden, you know, it becomes a big budget title with lots of promotion because it got lots of promotion. It did get some and lot of if advertisement. It has, if they it has spent a money on budget. advertisement. But how does a game with one character and one voice actress have? A, how is that expensive? How, where is the money coming from? I, I would assume it would be your what, people working. What is on the it, right? What? How is the game consuming resources? Right. Where in Far Cry we see how it's consuming resources. They have super high paid actors, lots of dialogue, lots of lines, lots of characters, a massive world. Mm -hmm. All that, all that requires money. Where's the money going in Returnal? Like, if Returnal costs the same or close to the same amount of money to make Far Cry, I'm just saying, like, where, where did it go? What was consuming it? That doesn't make any sense to me. They have one actress and one voice actress. Yeah. One. That's a that's nothing, and she's a, she wasn't a, a high pay like this guy is on Far Cry Six. Like, she's like probably like a no name actress who wouldn't cost a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. why, why, where's the money going? What, what's, what's making it big budget? I don't see the big budget there at all. So I was, I was looking, I was just trying to Google some stuff right now. I was listening to what you're saying, yeah. but, um, it looks like there's an article on IGN that was done in like May that says that house marquee found out about Returnal $70 price tag at the same time as everyone else. Sony thing. So as as in it wasn't. See, they them. weren't expecting to make it a seven. After each game. demo, the studio showed Sony a very says house mark. You got a little bit more availability to scope it out more and to grow the game. Blah blah blah. Um, to be sold more than sixty. Yeah. So it seems like it might not have just. It might not have been house marquee that was like, hey, we're gonna sell this for six, I don't think for it was. seventy. You know what I mean? I have always but felt it wasn't house. I'm not sure. I always thought it was Sony. But I'm not sure what Sony would get from selling a game at seventy. Like, what what do they actually get if House Marquee isn't owned by Sony? Then like they how get, how do they get? They like, get a what cut do they get of it. From it? They get a cut of that profit from making a game on on yeah Sony's because platform? because Sony provided the funding to make. So House Mark is is a second party. It's not a first party studio, right? But it's second party, so that means that they're under the Sony umbrella and they're in partnership with Sony, and Sony is part of the funding and production of the game. Not entirely, but but partly, mm -hmm. right? So Because it's second party. Okay. So they get a cut, and so it's in Sony's best interest to sell the game for as much as they possibly can. Mm. And I feel Sony was kind of pulling the wool over our eyes and kind of just pretending this is a AAA by putting it to $70, and just assuming assuming we'd all just, oh, okay, if that's what it is, then it must be a AAA title. And not really like what I'm doing, like examining, should this game have been $70? And I think the article you just read kind of, in a sense, proves my point in the fact that it, it's clear House Mark wasn't themselves determining it should be 70 They probably would have sold it closer to 40 yeah, it seemed like they an were just indie, making a game. Indie. They were just, yeah. And then it's like, oh. Because every game they've ever launched has been about 25 to 30 bucks. Every yeah. game Housemark has ever made. Yeah, but to not go back into yeah. the prices and stuff like that of games. But that that was basically what I played. I, I finished off Ratchet & Clank. It's a great game. I loved it. Yeah. Um, And then went into Returnal and fought with Returnal. So, <laughs> you know, so, but I've had some fun with Returnal. It is difficult, but I've still been playing it. You know, it's like, I'm almost trying to accept the challenge that 
buy on one is still fucking me up and I need to try to beat it. You're not alone, one, man. So half the audience can't beat it. Yeah. So I mean it's uh that's definitely some interesting statistics and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But um, you know, moving on from what we've been playing, let's go ahead and start off with the quick shots. So uh the first one that we got is that uh there was some news that uh Jim Ryan had um I guess gotten in an interview or whatnot and he decided that he uh him uh, and Sony wanted to have more crossplay games. And I thought that that was actually interesting that he would mention that, right? Because um, it seems, you know, with the, you know, the We Love Gaming, uh, you know, uh, conspiracy theory is that PlayStation has changed a lot of how they've worked as soon as Jim Ryan came into, mm-hmm. into the CEO position. And uh, it seems as if, uh, they're trying to to figure out how they can poach money from any and every orifice that they possibly can get their hands into. And this was one of them, right? I mean, a few podcasts ago, we talked about how they have like this crazy uh, concoction of a contract where if you have a game available on all platforms that offers in-game purchases, if somebody has played the game once on the PlayStation console, but they've purchased in-game currency on another console, such as the Switch or the Xbox or PC, that PlayStation then gets a small percentage of it just to allow the crossplay for you to be able to crossplay, like for you to move from the PlayStation mm-hmm. to the Xbox to the Switch to the PC with that same account, with the same characters, and never have to start over again. So, you know, with this, and then him saying like, oh, I want there to be more crossplay. It's like, okay, cool, but they still have, uh, at least to my knowledge, they still have this crazy uh, contract where they require all of this money for all of these weird-ass reasons uh, that they give, like with percentages and stuff like that of how they play, right? I mean, they're still having issues with Gearbox Mm -hmm. for Mm cross-play, you know, I think with like Borderlands and Mm -hmm. all that other stuff, you know? So if if you're still trying to get money, you know, with this elaborate way, of like, oh, if you ever sell anything, I should get a small percentage of it if they've ever played on my console. Right. Like, do you do you feel that this is like bullshit? Like, like Jim Ryan just talking, or or I or think what? Like, is um, there any kind of you know? Yes, weight to I it? don't think that this is Jim Ryan laying out his vision for PlayStation's future. I think this is entirely a response to backlash from negative press on this stuff the whole epic um lawsuit and all these things leaked from that right and you know epic trying to make sony look good with the cross play and sony saying no yeah all that we went through weeks a few weeks back that whole bad press right i think this is jim ryan coming out and kind of like trying to say no look we're Medigate changing damage. directions i don't think it's like i don't think it's like this this grand new vision that he's dreamed up and wants for playstation it's just uh, honestly, pure response to negative feedback and negative criticism that they've received. Because I think had this not been leaked, they would have kept business as usual. Like you're I mean, saying, they're gouging, still doing business still as usual. Yeah, and then even like he says one thing, right? But then behind the scenes, it's still like it looks like you're still trying to gouge everybody. Yeah, because he mm. was, you know, they asked him about uh, Gearbox, and he was like, "Well, I can't talk about that right now because we're still in talks." Um, with like negotiations and stuff like that. And it's like, dude, if you <laughs> honestly wanted crossplay, right, you would make it. If that was your some vision, of the most, that was your heart's goal for the PlayStation platform. Right. You, you would make it this, one of the most talk. easiest things right. to do. Exactly. Like it shouldn't exactly. be difficult. Like, exactly. I don't know why it has to be. Why can't it just be that if they're playing on the PlayStation and they purchased through the end game on the PlayStation that they can get a, a small percentage of that. Cool. But when you touch in everything, just because somebody attempted to try to cross play, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like if I if I like playing like if let's say we go with like the Xbox and the game cloud theory. Right. If I if I start playing the game on my Xbox and then I move to the game cloud and I run off or whatever, like, you know, I mean, you you're going somewhere portable. Mm -hmm. So if I started playing on my PlayStation but I want to play some more matches. I got to go on a road trip. So I'm in the back. You know what I mean? Mom's driving. Mm-hmm. You know, I got my my small uh, phone and I start playing Fortnite on my phone. You tell me you get a piece of that pie too? Because I bought V-Bucks off of my mobile phone? Like, 
that then you eliminating the whole interest of right. of them wanting to make the crossplay, right? And that's like one of the most that's one of the nicest things, right? When you could pop in Destiny and your characters are available on anything, you know, if it you got an Xbox, PlayStation, right. whatever. And it doesn't it's just seem there. like the reason why I'm calling BS more is only because it seems like the PlayStation isn't interested in crossplay unless the game is like a massive hit. Right, like where it lo- it feels like Xbox and PC and you know other platforms, they don't care if the game's a big hit or not. They want to give you the freedom to play across whatever platform you want to play it on. Right. Where Sony's like, I feel like the only games that you can actually even cross platform at all on Sony games are like the big massive hits, like Destiny or Fortnite. Sure. Like you can't cross play on Borderlands. You can't cross play on out on out uh, Riders. You can't cross play. On these little games, you know, that... I'll rather um, say little, but yeah. They're little compared to Epic, compared to Fortnite, right? Compared to, like, Warzone, Mm -hmm. Outriders is is little. That's what I mean. Like, it feels like... um, Or I guess you can say even little, even compared to, um, like... uh, I was going to say Rocket League, but that's probably still big. Um, I guess if I was looking I'm at Square thinking. Square Enix, Square Enix is like net worth roughly around like two billion, and then Epic is worth like thirty billion. Yeah, so, so I'm just saying like it's it's not li- little. I'm just in 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 in, in retrospect. Like in, if you yeah, if you're looking at it and the big picture, yeah, relative to Fortnite, it's little. Right. And it seems like Sony doesn't want to have anything to do with anybody unless they're this big, massive, thirty billion dollar potential net worth. Then Sony's like, okay, maybe we'll cross play because there's lots of money in it there. Mm-hmm. Where if they really just, like you said, cared about cross play, it'd be like across any game. Any game that's cross platform. Yeah. We want that freedom for you. Any game that's Gamer, available all over each console, user, you should just be able yeah, to do it. Yeah, we want right? you to have that freedom and that fun and that joy. But it's like Sony's only seems to be interested in cross play if there's any massive Warzone, Fortnite, Minecraft level. IP. Right, because wouldn't that be interesting if you were to, like, let's say, Biomutant, right? Like, you know, you got it on the PlayStation, but you wanted to play it on the Xbox. If you were able to just continue your story and character from Biomutant on the PlayStation onto your Xbox with no problem. Like, you don't have to restart it again. It's just there. You know what I mean? And that probably is, like, you know, having to do with something like maybe the games having their own server, you know, and having, like, some type of a cloud where you could download the information from sure. or whatever. Yeah, the game but, itself has a cloud. Yeah, right? yeah, but, I mean, that would be that would be interesting. I mean, yeah. I definitely think things like Outriders, you know, MMO type right. stuff or whatever should definitely have Absolutely. that feature. I mean, I feel like Microsoft would be, like, totally – if Sony will okay with it, we'll be okay with it because you'd have to get Sony's permission, right? right. They, they Microsoft will gladly let you transfer your Xbox file over to. I feel like Microsoft would be much more willing mm-hmm. to add that feature into their repertoire of offerings for yeah. their user. Where Sony, it'd be Sony who's the one is like, nah, we're okay, we don't need that, right? Yeah. Unless it's Fortnite, then we'll consider it, and then we'll consider it as long as there's a deal to be had. Yeah, and right. I also I also figure like a lot of these companies just kind of looking at it like oh well, we would do crossplay, but they just like if I put any in game currency type of stuff in there, Sony's you know it's like it, yeah. okay they're they're poaching it the yeah. moment somebody tries to play right on that console, so it's got, I kind of don't want to deal with that, you right. know what I mean? I, I'm trying to make every little bit of money I can, you know, and that's not helping, you know. So and it, it doesn't it seems like it would be like anything right if you just played one time or something like that on the playstation and then you just started buying currency because you play it on pc you like it better it just works better for even you. one time like, now you're stuck yeah and yeah. it ain't that one time purchase it's like all and of the purchases, purchases because they have an account on there it's like are gonna damn. be sliced by sony a bit yeah. <laughs> yes like all of my dlc content all that shit mm-hmm. that you just bought solely for the plate for the pc sony gets a cut of that that's crazy you know what I mean? And so you got Sony's cut, then you got whatever Steam cut or whatever else yeah, is there. Yeah, and I mean, I get like it. That. It's so, still worth it yeah. to Epic, and it's still worth it to Activision with Call of Duty and stuff because Sony's got such a huge player base that you need those players playing your game. So mm-hmm. you're like, fine. But 
Jim Ryan acting like this is like, oh, yeah, we're wanting to be more convenient for our players. No, you're not. Like, had there not mm-hmm. been the backlash in the leak, you would keep doing this. Honestly, in my opinion, I think they would. And I think that they're still going to do it. Like, you know. And then I, even that's true. If, right? if you yeah. still if you still in talks with Gearbox, then you really haven't changed. Nothing, you haven't right? changed your direction at all. Because it's still yeah. Gearbox just looking at the paper like, okay, we still got to think about this. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, it's just Jim Ryan covering their tracks. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, uh, as far as, like, crossplay goes, you know, I kind of, like, consider it a wash anyways. Like, I, I think it is what it is at that point. You know, it's like, okay, it'd be awesome if I could move, but I don't really be moving around with games like that. I you think know? with you and I, too, we're old gamers, mm-hmm. and that's always been the way. Like, if there's a game The game on is on the Xbox, Sega, it's on the Xbox. Right, or we're talking about, like, back when we had Segas, right? Like, if the game's on Sega, I can't take that cartridge and put it into my my Super NES. Right, like right. Like, it's, it's kind of been, be. like, a standard. But now in the internet internet age, when the online age has become stuff, more of yeah. a thing. And it definitely seems like Sony's just out to profit from it rather than offer new services to their users. Right. Rather um, than to utilize it. They're utilize just trying to it, figure yeah. out how they can make money from right. it. And it's like, I get I get the business aspect of it, but sure. I mean, do you really need to bottleneck it that much? Well, and also just don't lie to us. Be honest with us. No. Just say, Jim Ryan, no. We really try to get as much as we can out of every IP we have. We try to make the best deal we can for our for our our, our company mm-hmm. and the profit of our industry, dude. Just be honest with it. Don't pretend like oh we are big believers in crossplay and then have no real effort to show that that's what you believe. Like you're saying, still do back deals with like Borderlands and stuff. Yeah, he basically he basically said uh, I think towards the end of it he said that his the same procedures apply to everybody. So. Right. You know what I mean? It's not like we're giving favoritism or something like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, but right. But yeah, but uh moving on, um it looks like Sony. Yeah. Trademarked. Right, 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 right. PSX. <laughs> Sorry, I got it on there. But um yeah, so the trademark of the PSX, which is an event that was taking place quite often. Um over the last few years, it, it stopped happened. it stopped since 2018. Um, but it was going on like 16, 17, maybe 15 also. I think there was like three. And then the one in 2018 was actually held in Thailand. So that was something we couldn't go to. Mm. But we've been to 15 and 16. 16, 17. 16 we and went 17. To three. Okay. Yeah. 15, we 16, went every 17. year from the very yeah. first one that we could go to, we went to, even in Vegas. Right, right, right. So yeah, it was Vegas and it was held at in Anaheim, Anaheim. twice. Yeah. No, yeah. Vegas, San Fran. You're right. It was in San Fran and then Anaheim. You're right. You're right. It was in San Francisco. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, we basically. Went to San Fran. We drove to San Fran. Yeah, yeah. We drove there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, basically, it looks like there's a good possibility that we might be in for a PSX next year. Um, I don't know if it'll happen that quick. I mean, the world has opened up quite a bit um, with no mass mandates. Um, I guess they would probably be pre planning to see if shit hits the fan again or something like that. But. I mean, I'm looking forward to it, you know, next year. If if I can hear about it, you know, they normally take place around December. So it's a good time mm-hmm. towards the end of the year. And um, they're awesome events, man. And I'd love to go to it and, you know, and do some reporting and whatnot Absolutely. over there about some of the news that we're finding for the channel. So I think this is a guarantee. You think Why so? else would they trademark it if they weren't planning on never using it again or mm-hmm. making it part of their Big daily business. life? Big business, you know what I mean? Like trade, trade they trademark shit all the time. I yeah. guess. I I know. Like, but remember, remember, we were seeing. Uh, there was there was talks of like uh, for the PSVR, a way that you could use a banana as a controller. You could pretty much take an inanimate object, looking at it through the VR, and then it would turn into a controller because you could give it a button map right, layout. Right. There's patents and trademarks for like no, all kinds well, of weird shit. The only thing shit. I'll say to that is. Then why didn't they do it after the second PSX or the third PSX or the fourth PX? It was theirs then. If it was something that they were planning on having in their future forever, why did they only now recently decide to trademark that when they've been using this name and using this? You would think they would have trademarked it the moment they did the first one. I I want to say that it was a re-trademark. Like they put it back out there. Like they've already trademarked it, but maybe not. I'm trying to see if I can look into it right now. Well, the way I understood it was... This was a new thing they've done. They've decided to trademark PSX 
which makes me think that that means they're really considering making this like a BlizzCon, making this like an annual event that they do every year. I think in my mind, in lieu of E3, and it happens to line up with like E3 in my opinion, like, you know how Sony left E3, they kind of do their own thing now? Yeah. And I think like this is kind of like showing that, look, we still want to do something that's like E3, but we don't want to be in subservitude to the standard algorithm of doing things. Mm -hmm. And so I think that they trademarked PSX and they're going to make it a major, a major thing, a major branding thing. Okay. So you think it would be bigger? I think it's bigger be event bigger. than what it yeah, already is. I think it's going to be more important hmm. than what it was in the past. Like, I'm in my mind, they want it to be like E3, the next big thing people plan, yeah, and and go to, and it becomes a big major news outlet and media day, you know. So, um, I was trying to look on uh, Justy at trademarks uh, for PSX, and. It looks like it was started in 2017. The application was entered in 2017. And then it's been extended 2018. Um, and then extensions have been granted every year. So it looks like this one that was recent was an extension approval, uh, an extension request approval. But I don't know. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong thing. Maybe it's something else. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see, um, what, what's in store for us next year, you know, because I love the PlayStation event and, um, the fact that we could get a possibility to start getting these events, you know, maybe get like a CES again next year. That's not just like, you know, online or getting a, an E3 that you could actually visit in person. You know what I mean? Start getting these BlizzCons and these WonderCons and these freaking Comic-Cons mm -hmm. back open again. That should be dope. So, you know, I, yeah, I'm man, looking I, forward to I it. Can, uh, I can't wait until uh, we can start going to these things again. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping next year we'll be able – they'll do an in-person E3 again, and we'll be able to um, – uh, we'll be able to – so it looks like – so that's weird. Like mm -hmm. this article just launched. It says the application was filed on June 11th of this year. Mm -hmm. According to the United States Patent and Trademark Offices, the application was filed Friday, June 11th. Um, they have certainly haven't filed, filled the void left behind, which was last held in 2000, 2018. Um, the trademark application for PXX has been filed under the international class 041. Um, okay, you're on PlayStationLifestyle.net? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I found this Yeah, one. exactly. So this sounds like it's new. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure. Yeah, but either way, uh, them deciding to do it now, I'm wondering why. But if they if they haven't done it before, you know, but, you know, hey, that's yeah. uh, that'll be cool. I mean, especially if it's a bigger event than the E3. Or, or something of that magnitude. You know what I mean? That That's what would, I'm that would hoping. Be dumb. That's what I'm hoping. I mean, it was already pretty big. It damn near took up the whole building. Yeah. When, you know, in Anaheim, when we went. And, I thought the second also, one, San the Francisco. second one, the San Fran one was like really big. Yeah. I thought the Anaheim one was a, a it went backwards. They re, they went backwards Because the first quality. one we went to was in Vegas, right? Yeah, the first one we went to was in Vegas was was okay was that was good. pretty that was pretty but big. the second one was like really was big really huge, and they had like lots of floor plannings and lots of games you could play right it felt like e3 then anaheim just went to more of like floor decoration type shit just showcase showcase the west way the looks right yeah it was new. it was an indie bonanza though it was an indie bonanza it was lots the second of indies psx was like incredibly awesome yeah you know so i'm really looking forward i hope they make it big again and they go that route for sure you know so um, the next thing that we wanted to talk about was uh, for Spoken. Um, they they had this little video. It was like a tech video that they dropped, I guess, with like NVIDIA uh, graphics right. card gaming or something yeah, like that. FSR. And, uh, yeah, it was like it's it's something the FSR like stands for um, Fidelity Super Resolution. OK. And they were basically um, stating that this would give you like the best. They were trying to give you the best graphics that have been seen yet. Uh, on a that's console. the claim right right in the history of open world games right. right so it's supposed to give you that four that 4k 60 frames per second everything is beautiful 
you know, and they're saying that it needs it for 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 spoken. Um, and that was the one game that we saw that was showcased. I think it was originally nicknamed Project Athea. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got to see a little bit more um, about it and whatnot. And we still I'm still waiting to see more. Um, yeah, this this tech demo was actually all new for spoken footage which we hadn't seen before yeah she was but, doing like kicks off the of trees and right shit. <laughs> but it was also somewhat similar to what we've seen before so while yeah. it was all new footage it Just wasn't really running. new to us as the viewer it looked exactly like what we've already seen mm -hmm. there was like a couple enemies we saw like the big massive bear and we saw those two giant guys that she was fighting she was like making shields and stuff right, to defend right, right. against them which i was more so asking you like what did you think about like the enemy types and what it did you gleam anything about how you think the gameplay is going to be played um for me it looked like the enemy count was tiny was sparse like there was a lot of open space before you came across like even one enemy or so like you think two. it's heavy on traversal? It seemed like heavy on traversal, low on enemy count. I mean, it did seem like they were. That's like their bread and butter, right? Is mm -hmm. how the how the character is moving through the world, and I believe that that's what the guy was explaining yeah. when he was talking about it. Was you know that that how for spoken plays, you needed to have the sixty frames per second, and then they wanted to make it look as beautiful as possible. Right. So, you know, if you're doing a lot of quick movements and stuff like that, you definitely need that 60 for sure. Right. Um, as far as like the enemies, I didn't notice too much. But I mean, we saw a dragon at one point. Right. You know, I mean, we've seen bears, um, you know, so I feel like maybe this is something that's like that, like uh, is like a combination of like two worlds or something like that. Or maybe this could be like some type of a Skyrim type of world. Mm -hmm. There was bears in Skyrim as well as dragons. You know, so uh, maybe this it's is like a really like big that. bear, though, almost like boss like. It just seemed like the enemies she came across were very big mm. and very imposing. Um, you know, like we're in a lot of games, you come across like piss ants. Right, right. And right, they're right. just scattered all over the place. Yeah. And then occasionally you come across like a big enemy and it's kind of like a mini boss. Mm -hmm. It seemed like everything she was kind of coming across in this tech demo was like big and imposing and like took her a while to kind of like kill them. Mm. Um, just I don't know. It makes me one. It made me wonder about the direction the game is going when it comes to combat and stuff. Like, is this a little bit more like a Titan Soul, um, or is this going to be a little bit more a traditional open RPG? Like, what direction are they going hmm. with enemy types? Um, because yeah. there was there wasn't no piss ants that she was just slicing like a, like a hacking like a hack and slash. Right, right, right. They seemed very methodical. Like she's got to take her time and figure out a way to round it and to attack it this way and like very methodical in nature. Yeah. Versus just like a Breath of the Wild where you're just hacking and slashing everything. Yeah, but I'm I definitely want to see more of this game, man. I'm, and I'm excited. They're really more. hoping it's 4K 60 frames, man. That's yeah. super exciting. Uh, I was talking with uh, my boy Brahms uh, about some of these games that have that have come out, but like, what was uh what was Miles Morales showing at um on the PS5? Because I know it was like 60 frames per second and it had ray tracing, but did it have 4K? Yes, there was a 4K mode, but it wasn't 60 frames per second. Oh, it was 30. It was 30. So have we had one that's 4K and 60? Like, what's Ratchet? I, I Ratchet didn't even look was at Ratchet. 60 ray tracing as well. No 4K. 60 ray tracing, but no 4K. No, it would just upscale to 4K. Okay, so all right, so I guess that's what I'm getting no confused native with is that yeah, it's not native, but they're just upscaling right. it or whatever, you know. To 4K. most games that have, have been come doing out, upscaling. Yeah, I actually I think BioMutant is 4K 60 native, I believe. On the Xbox, yes, but not on the PlayStation. Not on the right? PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's hit and miss on a lot of these games, whether you get both. Right, and I was uh because we were talking about um like having a game. I'm waiting on a game that can give us the damn 60, 4K, and ray tracing yeah. all in one. We haven't and seen that yet. I don't think we've gotten yet. that yet. Right. So I'm definitely hoping that we can get to that sometime in this generation. It would be pretty cool. I think cool. so. Yeah, I think but, so. You know, yeah, people maybe are we still gotta, figuring out the hardware and stuff. Yeah, we um, got to get somebody to figure out an overclock like, or something. Yeah, it doesn't seem like we're getting that consistently yet. Yeah. yeah so this is sure. like hope, right? That maybe we can get that. Yeah. I hope I want that, right? I would love to see what a game looks like natively 4K with ray tracing in 60 frames per second. Right? Yeah, yeah. Not I just mean, upscaled. Yeah, I mean, I was talking about it, you know, previous times before or whatever, but it, it seems like for you to get like that that uh, 4K with like 
ray tracing, but it to be 30 frames per second or something like that. It just seemed like it was subpar. Like 60 frames per second is how it has to be for it to even be. I know, like, like I used to talk game. a lot about 60 frames per second, and you weren't really sure about it. I know yeah. you became a believer. You're like right. Colin. He was unsure about it too, but when he tried it, he became a believer. And I agree. I think it is a standard now. Like, you cannot really play a game these days unless it's in 60. <laughs> yeah, you're going to notice it, man. I, it's I would not look feel, brutal. Yeah, even if it's 4K, I'm not trying to play 30 frames ever again. It's going to look clunky to you. Yeah. Like, it's going to feel very clunky as right, you Right, right, right. It's just like, no, nah, this thing should be moving a little it. bit better. I know, I can't yeah. do it, right? So... so. <laughs> But they had to figure out how to give us 4K because that's kind of standard now. You would think, you as would think. as much as yeah. as much as the console showcases 4K and 8K on the damn box. 8K, you're right. We ain't getting that shit. Mm -mm. So houseway. I don't know what know the what deal I mean? is, man. It shouldn't be that big of a problem in this hardware. I, I don't know. We never I, get I don't, it. I don't mind if my PlayStation gets a little bit more noisy Me because either. it's trying to pump out my graphics. Why? Because I've been living with that shit with mm -hmm. the PlayStation 4. So I'm okay with that. I'll put that thing further away from me mm -hmm. if I got to figure it out. You know what I mean? To, to quiet it down. Or sell me an extra fan or something like that. You know, mm -hmm. or, or or something. You know, give me some other way. But you know, get them graphics out there, man. I like, agree. Man. Put that shit out I there. Agree. We in we in the new the new next gen. You know what I'm saying? And it's bad enough that y'all mofos keep making games for the play the PlayStation 4 uh, well, as well as the PS5. in my opinion, but, you know. if it's a game that can run on PlayStation 4, how come you can't get that running on 4K? I would get it if, like, it's a new engine and, like, this engine is very taxing to give you, like, new new textures and things we've never seen before. And now, now we're having a hard time getting 4K again. But come on, Far Cry 6? I mean, come on. Spider-Man that was made on the PS4 on yeah. that old hardware, you can't get that game to run a 4K. I'm not understanding like this. Yeah. I'm not getting it. Yeah, it's you a know? bummer. I would much rather my TV tell me, "Hey, bro, this ain't 4K," than to tell me that the game can't do the 4K. I'd rather, you know, I'd rather have a shitty TV, but right. like my system is trying to pump out as much 4K yeah. as it can. The bottleneck is my television, <laughs> yeah. not my system. Right, right, yeah. right. right mm -hmm. You know, so hey, it is what it is, but. On some other news, right? We have yeah. Ghost of Tsushima uh, rumors DLC. going on. Right? Yeah. So Ikushima. Ikushima. it seems like yeah, it seems like there's been some talk about a new uh, DLC coming out for Ghost of Tsushima that's called Ishikima or something like that. I Ikushima. Ika Ikushima, but it's a standalone. So we're talking like uh what is it miles morales red like red dead uh the the zombie one that they yeah. made that was like a standalone the the gat from hell that became a standalone uh miles morales which was a standalone but First light. It's, it's not it was i guess it was perceived as a dlc but in in uh in the developers insomniac's uh case they were saying that it was always a standalone or whatever right. it had just been labeled as a dlc expansion loan expansion from uh that's from, what they yeah, call expansion it right loan. um but uh yeah so ghost of ikashima and it's supposed to be a piece of its own it's supposed to be uh, presumably as large as miles morales was or uh, uncharted lost legacy um so a pretty full game yeah right with just a bit more content on there and a lot of the same stuff that you have grown to love or you know whatever that you've yeah, been and it's supposed to, to launch this year this year so it's uh fairly fairly soon right within like the next four or five months i mean we we don't have much left on here so i definitely don't think it's coming out holiday season it i think it's probably like, gonna beat it like maybe by october or something like that like it might be a whole new character too because you have Ghost of Tsushima, which mm -hmm. is Sakai. Yes. But this is Ghost of Ikashima. So what if, which sounds what like if it's Sakai a different moved, person man? in a different place. What if he just relocated? Maybe, but almost always in these little standalone DLCs, expansion it's loans, always a different it's person. a new person. Yeah, they well, use... Yeah, I guess so, because Miles Morales was Miles. It wasn't Spider-Man. Lost Legacy and was Lost that Legacy chick. was the other woman. First Light, it was the chick, too. The blonde, the pink-tailed chick. Right, right. So it just seems like... You're talking about Infamous, right? Yeah, the standalone they had was right, Infamous right, right. First Light. Yeah. Was the expansion loan. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I think, like, that's the direction they're going. I mean, I'm excited for it just because... I thought that Ghost of Tsushima should have been around 10 to 15 hours long. I thought it was, the game was a little bit too long. I thought they were... You, we talked about this. We got into this in detail that 
it got repetitive like very early. Um, yeah. The same enemy types, regardless of where you're at in the game. Right. Yada yada yada. Went through all that. Um, where I think like this excites me more because if it's more of like a fun size kind of like snack size level game where I get all the cool parts of Ghost of Tsushima, but it doesn't overstay its welcome, mm -hmm. then I'm excited. Um, and I'm hoping that they stick to like the Miles Morales um, kind of like price tag and charges 50 for it, you know? So we get a little bit of a discount because yeah. it's a shorter game. Right. And uh, I'm excited. Like I'm I'm pumped. I'm really looking forward because I love Miles Morales. It's one of my favorites. I love the size. I love everything about it. Yeah, Miles Morales was a solid game. I really liked sure. it a lot. You know, um, the the thing that I'm hoping for with this is, um, and no offense to the actor, but I'm just hoping that Jin. they can actually, yeah, that they can actually capture, um, if it's if it is the actor or whatever, you know, what I mean, a new actor or whatever, that they can uh, actually capture the right facial expressions and the feeling in that moment. It shouldn't feel like the character is not in it's the moment that's yeah. supposed to be appearing mm -hmm. on the screen. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, nothing, none of it adds up. Yeah. Like, or even so. like he acts all emotionless, right? Like, but the world's falling apart around him and like it's hopeless. Right. And then like you go in there and you just wreck everybody like a machine. Like, what are you hopeless for, man? Like, no one can touch you. It right. just doesn't add up, right? There's that dissonance that takes place in that game that yeah. they don't quite hit very well. Yeah, I just feel like the um the the that they should have worked a little bit more on the the facial mocap or something like that because I felt like his he was pretty stagnant. You know, that and his voice um should have been like Absolutely. you know done a little bit different. I mean, Absolutely. I'm not I'm not by all means no a uh, voice actor or anything like that where I could uh sit there and criticize too much, but I just feel like it was lacking just in that part for me to want to love that character more. You know what I mean? I thought the story was cool, but for me to enjoy like being that character, I feel like there was some things missing from it. Absolutely. So um, hopefully with this one, it gets me to love the character just as much as I enjoyed playing it. You know yeah, see, I, mean? I thought that Miles Morales was an improvement on Spider-Man. Yeah. Not just like the length and tightness of it but even the character like i liked miles better a little bit than peter parker mm -hmm. like i like peter parker too but yeah i don't know he was just really a really good character um like just like i liked rivet insomniac has done a really good job with like their tertiary characters right and in, in these series and so i mean I, i'm i agree like i'm hoping that they can capture what insomniac is doing and give us characters because yeah i wasn't really attached to Jin. I didn't feel like anything from Jin, honestly, until like the very last scene of the game when he was fighting his like stepfather or whatever. Yeah. That I actually felt. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like, okay, I see something there now. But up until that point, like none of it made sense. None of it added up. The way he was acting, the way the world was falling apart, the way he would look. And even the way all the people interacted with him, they would say the same exact thing over again. And even then with the um, stepfather thing, you know, his uncle or whatever that he was his uncle, his yeah. fighting, that was like, different you know what i mean the uncle felt a certain type of way he was giving off was a better very, performance yes the uncle was giving off a he better made performance. it a, a yeah. more of a heartfelt type yeah, maybe of a battle like this he, gotta be done did. so mm -hmm. you know let's do this and he teaches him a lesson while he's you know doing it and stuff like that so i i felt like you know that whole scene was basically carried on the weight of the uncle's back and not jen who's I agree. the main protagonist i think what i mean too is that that was the first time in the game that i was feeling attached or emotionally drawn in yeah Right. Where the rest of the game, I wasn't really feeling emotionally drawn in, right? Like I can't, he's this I, I, he's you know. this dishonorable shinobi who can't, who isn't allowed to do stealth, but at the same time, like he has no choice. But he's right. like, this, it's just it the didn't, emotions weren't connecting at all with me. And I think that's probably also part of like a script writing too. Yeah, but it wasn't as I, well I written like, as it could have been. Yeah, yeah, I just feel was, like was the poor. the situations mm -hmm. were uncalled for. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, I, I feel like the, the different moments that they put into it uh, were just like unnecessary. It's mm -hmm. like, why are you giving me so much grief about this when you you see what time it is, and then you only give me these <laughs> I agree, options? Man. You I know agree, what I mean? Man. The game didn't coincide with I agree. it. If they had legit given you options to go in, you know fighting and mm -hmm. you could do the whole game without ever shanking somebody in the back then you know i agree be different but they just was yeah i feel like that probably is like the real challenge is to like go through without ever shaking somebody in the back like if they didn't force you to do a tutorial on how to well, execute people and not just backs. that bro 
it's so much easier. Yeah, stealth. It's way easier. The game is like asking you in every sense of the word, not just like forcing you in some instances, but like yeah. even like look at how inviting it is. Right. You want to stealth me. Because look at how much easier it is. There's 30 guys in a camp, but there's plenty of high grass and there's buildings that you can jump into. And Go it's so it. much easier to kill everyone it's like, than okay. fighting them all one on one. But at the same time, you're trying to make me feel bad. Right. Like dishonorable. Is it? I was really annoyed with that, and that's why the the score suffered. Those are the we talked about this. These are the main reasons why for us the score suffered. So I'm hoping with the tighter, smaller length game, you know, they can a fix different some of those actress or actor like that, yeah. really helps. You know, yeah. make this I hope game feel like a it solid, goes take a long good step forward. Yeah, I hope it's a solid script and the storyline that we can follow after and it makes mm -hmm. sense you know what i mean i just hope it ain't some extra shit that they just decide to create but i mean i i don't know if you have but i still have not played i have not popped in ghost to play any of the extra dlc Ooh, that they added it, and stuff like that so the legend stuff i gotta yeah i gotta get on the legends and stuff like that yeah. you know once i I'll, I'll find some time but let's get into the main topic so the first one that we'll get into right is that xbox studios um have been talking about their acquisition of a new studio. Um, and it looks like it'll be announced really soon. Mm -hmm. um, there was a picture that was posted uh, to start some of the rumors off. It was like this mountain side that had like snow uh, falling from it. You know what I mean? Almost like an avalanche. Um, when I looked That's at the it. Hint. Yeah, I almost thought it was like uh it reminded me of Riders Republic. I didn't even see no avalanche shit there until or you know, or I saw snowboarding talking game. About it. Yeah, some type of snowboarding mm -hmm. game or something like that. Um, but you and I guess a few other people seem to think that Avalanche could be legitly what it is. Yeah, right? so tell me about there that. There is a studio called Avalanche Studio, and um, their most recent game coming out is Contraband, mm -hmm. and Contraband was revealed at Microsoft's E3 showcase. It was the one game that I kind of was upset with because they didn't show any gameplay. Like right. it was the old Microsoft way of doing things. Just, just like, a freaking trailer, a right. small trailer, and then that's it. it show yeah. like a yeah, like a cinematic, not even in game. Yeah, engined, right. not even Starfield like, but just like here's a few screenshots and you know a uh, pre-made cinematic. That always used to be like Sony, a Microsoft's MO, where Sony always showed like gameplay, like in-game footage or in-game engine stuff, mm -hmm. and it felt like they were doing that with this contraband. And I was upset because I wanted to, I was like, don't show me a game. Honestly, in my opinion, like don't show me a game unless you have some of the game to show or at least some of the in-game engine. So yeah. we have some idea of what we're getting into here. Right. Don't just give me a name and like a concept. Yeah. You show know, me like, some in-game footage. Yeah. Show me something in game. But that's what they did with con Contraband. And um, a lot of people are saying that that is a precursor to them announcing the acquisition of the studio Avalanche, right? Because Avalanche is the one who's making Contraband. Mm -hmm. And I know like we reported on um, one of the leaks before E3 was that Microsoft was acquiring a new IP. Right. Um, maybe this was it. Maybe Contraband, because it's an Xbox exclusive, mm -hmm. um, is the new IP that they've acquired. But maybe it goes further than that. And that's what we're hearing is true, that Microsoft is getting ready to announce that must be finalizing the deal or something. I yeah. don't know. We talked about this before the show. I mean, um, that was kind of like how it why was didn't with they the... say in the show that this is a new studio they've acquired. Yeah. They just showed the game. Right. But it sounds like they're trying to acquire the studio. Yeah. I mean, to me, it wouldn't make sense, right? If you if you show the if you do the showcase, the Xbox the E3 showcase or whatever, and you're showing all these Xbox games, and then you show contraband, but like you don't mention that. Uh, we just acquired this new studio. Check out what they're making. And then you show contraband. Like, I don't understand why you wouldn't combine that two together. Um, unless, you know, it would have to be it would have to be that you're showing me gameplay when you announce it the second time. Like if you if if Avalanche is what they bought, and Avalanche is making contraband, you tell me that you have just purchased Avalanche. You better be showing me gameplay because then why the hell else are you telling me about this shit? You know what I mean? Like it should, you could have just announced it with the other one as like a complete the, rollout together. So like I was telling you, I kind of feel like it might be a little reach. I mean, I was looking down right. the comments and some people were mentioning that like Nordisk films um, had purchased uh, Avalanche. Avalanche like back in 2018. 
so that's not far off. So if they were attempting to make a game, you know what I mean, or what what would they have a reason to purchase it if they were going to just sell it off? You know what I mean. Um, uh, some people say maybe Xbox made them just like an offer they hey, couldn't the price refuse. Is right, man. You know, absolutely but, right. <laughs> but um, it's like I know. just think like the only thing I can think of as to why they wouldn't reveal it at the E3 show mm -hmm. is because they want to kind of use it as another like um, hype reel, you know, kind of like how they did with Bethesda, you know, just like come out and announce it and it become like a big topic in and of itself. Yeah. Rather than trying to like, cause it loses some of the spotlight if it's sharing the stage with like every other game too, mm -hmm. like that, that news kind of gets lost in the spotlight. And I think like so Microsoft wants more of that hype around studio acquisition. Yeah, but is Avalanche as big as fucking Bethesda? Well, I was going to say, look up what games have as has Avalanche Studio made. Um, I mean, I will say Contraband looked cool. It looked it looks interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much faith I have in the studio Avalanche. I'm not too familiar with um, all the games that Avalanche has made. But do you see any there that um, look familiar that excite you about the acquisition of the studio? Okay, so Avalanche has done a Just Cause. Oh, they're the Just Cause studio. Yeah, okay. The Hunter, Just Cause 2, Renegade Ops, The Hunter Primal, Rumble City. They made Mad Max. Uh, oh, they made Mad Max. Just Cause 3 and 4. They made Rage 2 also. Oh, Rage. Um, so Rage? Yeah. I thought that was a Bethesda game. Bethesda was the publisher. Oh. So. Um, Avalanche made that game. But yeah, hmm. so it shows here. Um, that contraband is the next one that's on there. Well, that's a and it's saying studio, the publisher man. is Xbox Game Studios. But this is all with this is on Wikipedia because mm -hmm. Wikipedia will give you a good timeline layout of what they have. So I mean, you could take Wikipedia with a grain of salt because you don't know how, who's yeah. uh, fudged who's it. Who's edited whatever. that one? Right. But uh, okay, but, so those are some decent games. So I guess that would all mean we would start to see all those games come out on Game Pass as well. All the Just Causes. Just causes. Yeah. Um, you know. That would probably rage. be the real indicator. I think Just Cause is on there, though. Is it already it? on Game Pass? I don't know. I feel like it I feel like it would be on there already. Yeah. Is that an indicator, it's such an though? Old is that game. an indicator that they're I, buying the studio when you see things like Just Cause and Rage on I mean, you see Rage on Game, on Game Pass because of Bethesda, right? But I mean, you already saw that the moment that they they finally announced that Bethesda was on there, that there was like five Bethesda games that were available right. on there. Right. And then they just keep putting more up there because Bethesda has a large catalog, uh, catalog. But I would assume that if all of a sudden you start seeing uh, Rage 2 and Just Cause 3, 4, 2, and 1 right. on Game Pass... They didn't, they didn't bought them shits. Yeah, Something's they happening. didn't bought them. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's not all of the games like Square Enix. They dropped all their shit on Game Pass. You know what I mean? And uh, EA doesn't have. Well, EA has a little joint thing with them, so I can't use EA. But there's other other you know game developers that have a lot a large cat catalog that just don't have everything right. on freaking Game Pass. You know, so you know they ain't been bought yet. But right, I don't know. Absolutely. So. I mean, for me, it's exciting, of course, any any new acquisition. And what does it mean for you and me, dude? It means more free games on Game Pass. So every time Microsoft announces a new studio acquisition, <laughs> I get excited, you know, because I know that it just means more value. Every It just makes, it spreads my $15 out that much more, you know? Just Cause um, 4 is available on Game Pass. See, well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's interesting to me. <laughs> so see, son, there's some truth to this rumor, probably. Right? Uh, I don't know. Let me see. I'm trying to see if like Rage Two is on there. I would think Rage Two is on there. You think so? I think so, man. If they got Just Cause on there also, then then that, that's a wrap. Then see, Just Cause that's interesting to me. But Just Cause Four is on there, not Just Cause. Yeah, well, that's the newest one. That's the one everyone wants, right? Right. So, but I mean, you know they'd be putting all the old shit on there. <laughs> <laughs> Is that that old though? What just cause? Just cause, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm saying like they be putting like all of the old stuff. You know, what I mean, like Game Pass got a lot of games, and they be throwing a lot of old shit on there. You know, because people want to play some of them games that they might have uh, missed. Or whatever, you know what I mean? Game Pass right. is, is ultimately like walking into GameStop and looking in the used section. 
to see like, oh, that that's that's there and that's cheap. <laughs> nah, they got like, new games you know I mean? too there, man. They Lots got of new, new games. They, they have their Not new games. That but I'm saying they have a large when they say in a hundred plus, all that shit is old. A lot of them are old. They got about like a the good The majority are old. Yeah, they right. got about like a good twenty that's like up to date. Yeah, a lot of them are old. But a lot of them are older games. Right. They're not saying they ain't ones you don't want to play, but right. they're just, they've been around for a few years, you know? So that it's I'm like, just saying, like, that would be Avalanche Studios' like top prize is Just Cause 4, because it's their most recent and newest game. And if they're giving it to Game Pass, that implies some kind of partnership, right? Yeah. yeah for so, sure. unless PlayStation got it on their shit already. Right. Which I don't know. I I could have sworn we just got a just cause, right? Uh, from PlayStation, for the uh, for the little PlayStation thing, the PlayStation Plus. Right. But I don't remember which just cause it was. It might have been for. Um. But yeah. So, um. Yeah. On to the next topic, right? So, mm. um, EA. We were talking about EA. So, mm-hmm. um, it looks like. EA has uh, recently revealed that they're going to be uh, showing us an IP that's been around for a while, we but that they just is. haven't had a game come out for a long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, there is supposed to be an EA reveal. EA Play. Um, showcase or something. Yeah, in EA a, Play. There in, you go. In, June, in July. July right? Yeah, so they're supposed to be showing a lot of games over there. And um, this new or this revival of an old IP is supposed to be one of the games that they're going to be showcasing. There's speculation. I wanted to know what do you think it is? Or, okay, let me ask you what you think it is. And also, is that what you want it to be? What you think it is, is it what you want it to be? Um, I'm honestly not really sure exactly what it could be. It's been a while since I've looked at EA's like large category. Well, remember this is this is a game that supposedly is being revitalized, mm-hmm. an old IP. You know, like you put a question mark there of what I think that you thought it was. Yeah, there's definitely been rumors of Dead Space being okay. uh, the thing, and I guess uh, that's because um, when the person was announcing it, uh, he mentioned. Uh, as long as they're not dead before it arrives. Mm. So they they keyed in on the word dead and they're looking at all the old uh, EA games and Dead Space happens to be one of them. Um, I would love that. Dead Space was an awesome game. Awesome game. So for them to bring it back and for it to be new would be crazy. You know, I feel like that would be what rivaled Returnal, right? Because it would be kind of like the same type ish game absolutely but see, I not, not a Dead not a because uh, it's not rogue like not a rogue yeah right but you know as far as like that uh yeah, that creepy, creepy aspect or alien whatever. sci-fi right, right right shoot him you know so um you know it could be dead dead space or whatever but i mean how long has it been since we had a dragon age well dragon age 4 is coming out that's not right this isn't and it's this been isn't, announced this isn't that old ip being revitalized yeah um the only other game that I could think of other than like Dragon Age or Dead Space would be like, in my mind, Old Knights of the Old Republic. And I do know that there were some words of that. We, there was and some so, talk about, but they said, the dude said that it wasn't going to be a Star Wars game though. Oh, he said that it wasn't going to be Star Wars? Yeah. So there isn't a whole lot to glean here that's an old IP yeah. that we would want to be revitalized. It really only comes down to a few. Right. And it's the more and more you remove things from the equation the more and more it looks like dead space is the uh is the answer that's a huge hint I hope yeah. you're not dead before it arrives you I would mean. think but i feel like there's so much shit that people be saying and doing that like you you run into so I mean, much i don't know what really what else could it be titanfall i mean that's not old enough is it I mean, it kind of like died, right? It, it did. It died die. enough to Typhoon Two kind of failed to be to be needing to get revived, right? I just don't know what else it could be, man. I don't know. Burnout Paradise, that'd be cool. Ooh, a, a new burnout, burnout game would be, would be nice. Cool. Like, I feel dead, like they right? needed to do another. They need burnout. to revitalize that, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So maybe Burnout Paradise, I would love that. Shout out to my sister. She would love that, too. We talked about that this weekend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Ellie for sure would like that. You know, man. so, like, that would be really neat. But if it's not Star Wars, then that's really all we're left with is, like, Titanfall. It's not Battlefield. That's already coming out. It's not any of their sports games because those are those are they, steady. They stay coming out. Those yeah, are that's not an old IP. You know, so what else can it be? If it's not Star Wars, you're left with Titanfall. 
burnout or dead space. Hmm. And of those three, I like all three of those. Uh, I would probably, how would you rank those? What would you want? What would be out of those three you want? All right, give them to me again. Number burnout. one, burnout, uh, dead space, or um, Titanfall. Uh, F Titanfall. I was never really a big fan of You're Titanfall. You never in so Titanfall? I don't care about Titanfall. You might like I know it was camp- a, I know like it was a it, popular actually. thing. You might like Titanfall too. Um, but I would probably have to say, who Burnout or Dead Space. I really enjoyed Dead Space, but I also really enjoyed Burnout. Now, I, I would assume that Wreckfest was, was probably like as close to a Burnout as we would get. Yeah, um, currently, but, but I haven't fast, really played. Based. I haven't played Wreck yeah. Face, Re- yeah, Wreckfest I. yet. So, um, I would say just because of my love for like story driven, you know, games, you know, R- RPGs, different things like that, I would have to say Dead Space. Like, I, I would, I would hope that you know people have gleamed that Dead Space is it and that it is it. Um, but you know, we'll, we won't did, be able to find out Dead until Space, July. You might have to look it up or something. I don't know. But did Dead Space take a hit? in sales in dead space three because hmm. we have dead space one two and three right right and then it just vanished off the face of the planet was there like <laughs> was it a bad sales game like a reason why yeah like why would it fail i would just think you would think dead space would would last it was such a well done game yeah you would think that it would last the, te- the you know test of time it would it would win that test you know? Um, it looks like Dead Space Three sold about six hundred five thousand copies. That's why, that's not very good. Um, how much did Dead Space Two sell? I don't know if that's within. How many copies? That's at, that's at a month. Let me see, like in total. Uh, because I would like to see how it did compare to Dead Space Two. Yeah, six hundred five thousand copies. Um, Dead Space Two sold four million. Well, that's why they got rid of it then, right? Mm. Four million. Yeah, you're right. That could be it. Four million. Yeah. I mean, no, that would be... I, that's not a month. That's what it sold. Yeah. Oh, it's just saying in its debut. So it must not sold much after that. So I they didn't even get would. to a million copies sold on Dead Space 3. So somehow Dead Space 2 to 3, people no longer wanted to play it. Yeah. I'm not sure what, what would have happened in that. That would have made mm. it go down. I think I played Dead Space 3. I did too. I think we played all three of them. I'd have to go back and check in my uh in my console's history and see if I got any trophies for Dead Space Three. Yeah, but yeah. I'm mean, that's that's weird though. But yeah, I mean, if it sold six hundred five thousand copies compared to selling you, like four million, you know, that's I mean? why it got that's cut. That's a huge difference. That's why it got cut. Yeah, because you're like it's only going to go down. I right could see here. Jim Ryan nixing that quick. Do you think this is like a Dead Space reboot, like go back to Dead Space One kind of thing, or like oh, a Dead God, Space Four? I would hope not. I would hope that like they wouldn't a, a do remake. a remake or something like that. Yeah, I do not want to see a remake. What about just like a reboot of the series? So it's not a direct copy. I wouldn't mind just a like, reboot. Kind of like what they did with God of War. Or kind of like what they did with Prey. You know, or, they changed Prey around. Right. I don't know if it did that well, though. But, but you know, um, like you relaunch, I don't mind you it. remarket and relaunch it. Yeah. And start from scratch and just yeah. call it Dead Space again. I mean, if I got if I got a Dead Space, right, just a new... Um, it's it's gonna be in space, so you give me another scenario or whatever, but you know it's in 4K and 60 frames per second. Like I'm there, like you know what I mean. We was playing shit in 30, and and not even in, in 4K. You know, 1080p. We were having a grand and shit. old time. So I mean, yeah, and it was fun. So I could only imagine what it would be like if you had to play it in 60. But I could see there being a lot of type of comparisons 3D with like sound. Eternal. With the way it looks and stuff, yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> just imagine incorporating the dual sense controller. Oh, I meant to ask you on Returnal. That. Did you feel the little raindrops and stuff? Uh, yeah. I I was feeling cool. freaking uh raindrops. I was feeling ground vibrations and other shit. And I was like, dude, why is my shit moving, man? Is there something about to pop up on me? Because <laughs> like I did not Didn't understand why. Didn't the raindrops why. feel dope though? Like yeah. that's unique to that controller. I've never felt nothing like that. Like yeah. specific dots. Right, right, on right. The yeah, because it was just like, <laughs> it was like, boom, 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 boom. It was like, this yeah, is yeah, trip, yeah, 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 little tinkles. Yeah, little tinkles all over yeah, all your hands. Of, yeah. That was really neat. Anyways, yeah, for sure. But like, um, you're right. Like, this has a parallel to Returnal in that sense. Right. And just reboot with the alien it with and the high quality the space graphics. suit, and then you know, yeah. kind of over the shoulder type shit. Absolutely. You know, it, Absolutely. it would definitely. It's not quite be. as fast paced, but just the I could see aura, the really fast dude. Paced. A fast paced Dead Space, interesting. 
But I mean, it would definitely. I don't change. see that appeals more to me. Where I where I'm not the game's not over when I die. Right. right I would right. like that more. Yeah. In the, in the Dead Space vibe. Right. Like, right. Right. You misstepped. That's you just actually a cool game. comparison, yeah. even more so than like Dark Souls for Eternal. Had it been more like a Dead Space, mm-hmm. make it a tad more creepy. Right. And right, right. where you you don't die over and over again. Yeah. Like, that would have been a cool little way. To yeah. Get you to. got your checkpoints or whatever that, that you cool hidden path. in the story, yeah. but you you know you finished upgrade doing. your weapons, you find new weapons. Yeah. But with that, they would have had to like um. They would have had to do more with the world. You know what I mean? They would have had to make more biome variations. Well, that's why I said add a couple more biomes, and now you have a full-length game. Right. That you right, don't right. need to make a roguelike to yeah, get more Yeah, no rearranging or anything like that. The map is set right. the way it is, but you got a couple right. more biomes, and you just got to make it through and get to the boss. So you'd probably have – they'd probably be a bit larger. It would probably be more biomes, and they'd be larger Yeah. at that point. Yeah, absolutely. It would be a little bit larger. Through. Yeah. But that's but, fine because <clears> – <throat> You want the game to be 10 to 15 hours, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So um, I know I had mentioned uh, Dragon Age uh, 4 before, um, but it looks like there's uh, there's talks of an alpha that's supposed to be coming out and this year. On um, the PlayStation. Possibly. Yeah, possibly um, in July, maybe, around the same time that this EA uh, reveal mm-hmm. comes out. Uh, but, yeah, it's supposed to be like, you know, just like a little demo or whatever that allowing you to play. Uh, Dragon Age Four. I think uh, I think they discovered it somehow, right? They, yeah, they were it was picking leaked. through some uh, some um, data, some PlayStation. Yeah, data. and a new leak uh, to be believed. An alpha build of Dragon Age Four might be coming to PlayStation next month, so July, like you said. Yeah. Um, the leak uh, comes from an unofficial PlayStation game size Twitter account, which was quick to point out that an alpha hasn't been added to the database, but they believe that a test version is coming. Um, this apparently is happening ahead of the July EA Play event, which is set to kick off on July 22nd. So I think we'll definitely learn more about mm-hmm. Dragon Age 4, which I'm excited about. I mean, <laughs> I know we've had this conversation before. Yeah, You weren't a fan. You like Dragon Age. Um, I like Dragon Age not, 1 liked... and how many are there? There's three, right? Three. So you like so Dragon Age 1 and 2. I think 1 and 2 I liked, but, didn't but like Inquisition, Inquisition I didn't, didn't care like. for. Right. Because right. I felt like it was more of the same shit and I was playing the same stuff and it got boring and it just wasn't interesting at all it was but i, I still enjoyed great. it just because i like dragon age uh-huh. and i like the whole mass effect kind of you know right right right. the mass genre. Effect, well, the mass that effect genre. The, the mass effect type of genre is is how i even got into dragon right, age right but Same i just here. felt like it was inadequate i mean i've hell i've felt that the last mass effect was inadequate absolutely for being a mass effect absolutely you know what i mean so yeah uh, i definitely didn't pick up andromeda or anything like that yeah I, I don't I, I don't consider inquisition to be like a mass masterpiece of any kind but mm-hmm. i still consider it a good game uh, and it was well received by critics uh, which yeah. we've discussed before but but i like it and so like i'm i don't know which setting i like better i don't know if i like the medieval setting or the space setting better but i like the mass effect um mechanic mm-hmm. and i like when i like going into a new setting and playing that mechanic that's not in space you know which is why guardians of the sorcery. galaxy will be so so great Right, it's because Guardians of the Galaxy that. might scratch that itch. Yeah, but we haven't had Dragon Age in a long time, and so like, I would be excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. But I do agree. The one thing I do agree with you on Inquisition is that it overstays its welcome. I do think like they have you doing the same exact thing for a very long period of time, mm-hmm. like listening to arguments and talking and talking and talking for like a very long period of time. Right, which makes you kind of want to quit and makes you leave a bad taste in your mouth. So I'll put it. I'll put it like this. Right. So there's quite a few games that we've come across in our years of playing that have been pretty atrocious, right? How how do you feel about Thief? Um, a six. A I don't six? think it's trash, but it gets down there. Right. It it's, gets down. It was there. pretty bad. Right? It was bad. I don't think. Fred, so as much as they were hyping the game up and showcasing it, and yeah, it definitely wasn't good. It, it goes down to like up. fair, okay. I think I would say okay. It was okay. Right. So I'm trying to... I think to... it was okay. <clears throat> so the reason why I'm asking um, about Thief is it's got like... We were hyped about that one, man. I know we were super pumped for that, bro. Right, because we were thinking it was going to be like... Dishonored. Um, Dishonored you know, like or something like that. Yeah. Splinter Cell, just, high quality. It ended yeah. up not being it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I, I, I can't even... I don't is know. Is that what, what you're worried about with this one? 
No. Or is that so, what Inquisition did to you? Metacritic gave it a 67 or whatever. Okay, so, well, it's about a 6 in my uh, book. Essentially, uh, what I was bringing up Thief was is that I've actually finished Thief, mm-hmm. right? As bad as it was, I still finished Me too. Thief. Yeah. Um, with Dragon Age Inquisition, I did not want to finish it. I purchased it and did not finish it. So majority of games, if they're bad, I may still finish it, but this did not make me want to finish it whatsoever. So that's all I was I was comparing it to. Part that. of it, like I finished part a lot of it is of, the I length finished too, back though, games. right? So I Thief mean, is a much shorter game. Yeah, Thief is is short, but it seems like it would be easier for you to just like be like, I oh, fuck this game, and you know, and and then go and sell it. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's short. Like yeah. you just wow. Would I even but waste didn't my you time put quite a few hours into Inquisition before you gave up on it? I gave it. You the didn't good, give up. I on gave it the good college try. Yeah, but you probably I put just, like a dozen hours into it, right? Um, I don't know. I'd have to go I back and did. come back. If you in look there. at your PlayStation, yeah. in, I the, bet in you the comments, did. I'll check below yeah. and see uh, uh, if uh, if I, I can lots of hours recall what time it was. And I got burnt out on it. So like mm-hmm. sometimes I try to. I hear your point, but I sometimes try to separate games. In in the sense of a category of burnout versus it's just bad enough I don't want to play anymore. Mm. right where some games i get burned out on and i never finish them Mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that i didn't really enjoy the time i had spent with them yeah well i didn't i didn't enjoy the dragon age story i didn't enjoy the story i didn't like the way it looked i didn't i i mean i don't think i enjoyed playing because nothing is like crazy memorable to me about except for the shit that that i saw in it i like I, i thought it was well it was just for me it was the standard Mass Effect Dragon Age formula. Yeah. That I, I enjoy that formula in general. Right. So I enjoyed my time with it. And I, I know there were some there were some zones that I enjoyed. Like there was like a, a zombie zone uh-huh. that I had a fun time playing through and collecting loot and stuff was pretty fun. Yeah. But it did. It overstayed its welcome in my book. And mm-hmm. so because of that, like I finished Dragon Age. I didn't finish Inquisition. Mm-hmm. So like I hear you. I'm just saying, so this game doesn't rise to that level of good, in my opinion, yeah. like, where I agree with you. But I don't, I never would consider it like garbage. Like, like I would consider, you know, uh, medium, like what you told me, that would be like garbage to me. Like some games would be garbage. You know, it's hard to even think of garbage games. Can you even think of a game that's just garbage mm. that we played? I mean, it's hard for me to imagine like a game that's absolute trash. Like it's hard for me to think um destruction all stars like i mean i don't know like what game is like play. trash yeah we ain't really play it so you can't really right. give, give so, our say on because we learned it trash. was trash before we even tried it but yeah yeah the idea of it or whatever it's just it's hard for me i'd say what i'd I say, even say medium wasn't trash it was just you know it was a meh game you know what i mean right. it was it looked good as far as like graphics Which is what like is andromeda was it too good. it's meh it's okay yeah but I feel like I feel like uh, Inquisitions didn't check a lot of boxes on my list. But you know that's mm. that's you know whatever. That's an old ass game. Um, you know the fact that they're still pushing forward with Dragon Age Four is cool. Um, hopefully we'll will be able to see some stuff from EA Play. Maybe get to see like some actual gameplay and them going through like a level or a scenario, and that'll be cool. But um, I'm probably gonna be cool off of Dragon Age Four unless I see something that just really entices me, because I feel like most of my energy for that type of of game would be put into Guardians of the Galaxy, which mm-hmm. is coming out this year. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I would be more inclined to jump on Guardians of the Galaxy than on Dragon Age Four at mm-hmm. this point. Mm-hmm. But you know that I did enjoy the previous Dragon Ages before the Inquisition. It's just that once I had like three games of the same type, maybe of it was shit, burnout too, and for then you. it did not even yeah. look good. It just was kind of like, damn. And then well, the it was like a PS3 game, right? It's a very think, old game. Yeah, I think Dragon Age Inquisition came out for the PS4. It did, maybe. but I think it was like a. I think it was launched on the PS3 as well, wasn't it? Dragon Age Inquisition PS3. Mm. I don't know. So, I mean, like, maybe that's why it didn't look that good to you? Dragon Age Inquisition. Let me see what consoles it came out for. Um, um, it I came out for the PlayStation 3. Yeah. And then X- it also yeah. came out for the 4. Yeah. So, that's yeah. why I think it didn't look that good to you, man. Yeah. Because it's an old game. Right. Like, it is a really old game. It's been a long time since we've seen Dragon Age. Mm-hmm. You know? And I think, like... That was back in 2014, too. 
Yeah, exactly. So it's it's an old game. It's not going to look that great, but mm-hmm. I think that it, I think that it hit the mark for like the Dragon Age, um, standard, like what we come to expect from a Dragon Age game. I don't think it was like trash in the sense that Andromeda, Mass Effect Andromeda was, mm-hmm. um, but uh, I do agree that it overshot its welcome. I do agree with you on that. I do agree it was more faulty. It has more faults than the other Dragon Ages do. Yeah. Than one and two had. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, moving on. So it looks like there's still a whole lot of issues and hoopla going on with Blue Box games. Yeah. Um, I know we talked about. Um, I know we talked about. Uh, all of the little Silent Hill stuff with the PT theory and all that last mm-hmm. last week. Um, but like as soon as all of that stuff was going around, right? I think sort of like Sunday or like Monday of this week. Um, or this past week, uh, basically, uh, the, the lead developer, that Hassan guy decided to get on camera and talk Last to week, the people just before we, uh, we aired, I think, or around the time we aired the show. Right. Right. So he got on camera and decided to talk about, uh, the game and try to dispel some of the rumors that were going on about his thing, saying that the game was real and that he's not a day that old. he's real. That he's real <laughs> and that, you know, that this all these theories that people are concocting are totally incorrect. And it sounded like he was pretty down about his game getting thought of as somebody else's game. And then, you know, getting like, I guess, a lot of hype that's good, but it, it could be bad for you, you know. But, um, you know, th- this talk, it was just like more stuff. It, but it seemed like no matter what he posted... There was new shit that came out as far as like rumors were concerned. I think, you found some of that stuff. I think right? that's the problem here that I have with the whole situation. Uh huh. Is that um, I feel like these guys have kind of messed up. This if this if there's no um, if there really is no connection, if this is true, right? Like what Hassan said. Yeah. There's no connection with Hideo Kojima. There's no connection with Silent Hill. <laughs> there's no connection with Konami. Right, like if it really is just all literally coincidence, which it makes no sense to me, how there can be that many coincidences. I'm sorry, I just I don't buy it. Then in my mind, like they've messed up bad, and they've kind of like they went too far with it. Yeah. Like you can't tell me, dude. You cannot tell me. I'm not gonna buy it. You cannot tell me that they didn't know what they were doing when they made that tweet saying our game isn't abandoned. It starts with S and ends ends with L. You can't tell me that they didn't know what they were doing there. They knew what game they're linking it to. They knew what game people would consider when you do that. You yeah. cannot tell me that um, they didn't know what they were doing when they made their logo exactly like PlayStation, right? Even with the blue and everything on the. PlayStation. I still kind of thought that that was a stretch, though. It's just a box. You cannot tell me he didn't know what he was doing when he when he put his list of games he's worked on and put PT as one of them with the physical <laughs> trainer. You can't tell me like he didn't know what he was doing. Like he's I don't feel sorry uh, for you, man. Like yeah. you did this to yourself, dude. Like you fed the rumors. You fed into it. You yeah, fed the people. Sure. You know, you fed the trolls and you got bit. Yeah. You know, and I think like my mind is like, you know, I don't know what y'all do are doing over there at Blue Box, buddy. But it's very peculiar. But y'all was asking for this and shit. And it's like, you was, <laughs> you was y'all legit asking, asking for, for this. Yeah. You're asking to get bit, right? I mean, you see what I'm saying? Like, he's asking to get burned. You play with fire, and you're going to get burned. Yeah. But what's weird, even even more weird, is like the way this rabbit hole is changing. Is like, you talked about new things came out. Right. Like, so he comes out, and he's all sad and solemn with the video <laughs> talking about his world's falling apart. Yeah, man, I'm he looked like devastated, person. dude. He's you like, know. well, I got to be up here on this bitch <laughs> talking to y'all about this damn game. But what's up? But What's up, bro? Like, they announced, okay, we're going to do a reveal on June 25th, which was yesterday. Yeah. And, and he pushed it back. Dude. <laughs> you use the reveal to say you're delaying? Right. Dude. 
what? That's a, that's messed up. And that's until wrong. August. Yeah, and you're delaying until August. And what's also even more strange is there's this supposed, he said, is a fake Blue Box YouTube channel. <laughs> He's claimed Hassan, right? Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. fake. But somehow this fake YouTube channel started a countdown for this June 25th reveal. Mm-hmm. And right when the clock hit zero, I'm not kidding, right when the clock hit zero, mm-hmm. his video posts. Really? How can this... How can a fake channel line it up that perfect? That doesn't sound like fake to me. Yeah. And then also shortly after that video, you sent me another video that YouTube channel listed with the Morse code thing and abandoned. Right. And they started to communicate with the audience in Morse code. <laughs> and we have the writing. I don't know if you have it on your computer to pull up what it says. Uh, let me but see. this is what it says. Read it out. It's blue guy versus red guy or something like that, right? Hold on, let me see. If it's like blue that. versus it's like blue versus red. People are speculating blue is Sony, red is Konami. Yeah, and they're so, talking to each other. So the viewers quickly deciphered the source that would be conversation. So it says blue, find the source. Red, reality bends to my will, but my mind is delusional. Blue, I can't trust you if you can't trust your mind. So find the source. Mm-hmm. Red, shall I remind you who I am? Blue. Shall I remind you what I can do? Blue, I think they spot me, stop playing me, and find the source. Red, I can't get hold of you, so I assume you got made. Time to separate. Blue, bye-bye for now, Red. It's weird. What in the world? So a lot of people read that, and what did they immediately start doing on Reddit? You know, finding the source. (laughs) What's the source, right? The first source, like what are they talking about? So that's happening right now, y'all. If you want to know more and you want to really go down this rabbit hole, to, go to the abandoned subreddit. Reddit is and definitely dude, good for they're, rabbit holes, Dude, bro. They're, they're going out there, bro, with all different sorts of theories. And they even did something else, too. Like at the ver- They did one more Morse code at the very end. If you scroll down, they did one more okay, red and blue. Um, endure. Red said endure. Red and then said blue en- said survive. Endure and survive. That sounds hor- horror-related. For sure. Right? Like suspense horror. Yeah. And I don't know. I just feel like I'm not still convinced that this has nothing to do with Kojima and Silent Hill. Yeah, but man, this sounds like just like some extra shit, right? Like, why would you put so much into this to tell people that this ain't the game and then it ends up being the game? I know, man. Like, this is a lot. Like, that dude didn't look like he was reading off of something. He looked like he was definitely going off the top of his head when talking about it. Now, I don't know if that makes him a good actor. Um, I've never Googled the guy's name, but I'm sure the people in Reddit sure shit did. And If this is Hideo Kojima, okay, it's like one of two things. Either this is the greatest troll (laughs) that he's achieved of all time, or these dudes are just absolutely an utterly their pr department is absolutely and utterly incompetent because this isn't going to help the game or they think it's not going to help the game it's going to hurt the game i mean or or their pr people could be geniuses right because if they know that a silent hill game is wanted and that all of this shit that co- that hideo has done before and then they decide to piggyback off of that fame to get their third party uh, or their um you know yeah their their little small indie studio at that much buzz, like people know about blue box, but games it's now. turning into like hate. Yeah, where people are like really mad now, be- because they feel like they've They're been being played, played with. with. Yeah. Yes, and sure. I get it because there's way too many coincidences to make you feel like this is nothing. We're all just m- imagining this, right? We're all imagining this. This dude just so happens to have the exact same name had as Hideo Kojima. <laughs> Not the in same Japanese. name, but. It oh, is. Okay. It's the He's literally, talking about the hero thing. Yeah, yeah if you yeah. translate Kojima <laughs> into Turkish, it's Hassan or whatever. It's like the same thing, and they yeah. both mean hero. It's like, come on, man. These things are so like his. If you go to if you go to Hassan's um, uh, account on PSN, yeah, it has the trophy numbers like I don't remember like whatever six three one two three. Mm-hmm. That's the like, the exact same number from like Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> like okay. the same thing in like the trophy from medical star like yeah i'm sorry and like the demon blood thing and the siren head and like everything we've seen i don't see how you can't 
come to the conclusion that this is Hideo Kojima. Or Hassan did this on purpose. The Blue Box team, like you're saying, they knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. They put all these things out there, the trophy number, the demon blood, the all these things they did because Hassan did this. The ends with S, ends with L, the Blue Box logo to try to make it look like a Hideo Kojima project. And in a sense, just like lied to everybody, you know? Yeah. Like, Almost in, almost in my mind, if I was Hideo Kojima, I'd be mad because it's like you used my likeness in a sense. Not like my likeness, but you almost in a sense stole me to promote your product. Yeah, you use my you use my work to hype up my yours. work. And right. exactly. And my M.O. of doing this. So to pretend it's me. So your product can get hyped up. So I was trying to look and, and find out like, OK, if you called your your project abandoned before what would make you uh claim that the project's name isn't that it starts with an s and ends with an l and i was trying to find some stuff and like so i was trying to look like the a synonym or whatever for abandoned and like the only thing i could see in there that would work was like stranded mm. so it's if not you quite were an to, l though at the end, it's right? not there's no l there. i know someone so maybe it was like survival like stranded something i know um, someone listed what about survival what if the mm -hmm. game called, was called Survival? Maybe. That's an S and an L. But you could also look at it and be like, oh, Death Stranding. Oh, you're right, dude. It's like, oh, Abandoned right, is another bro. name for Stranded. You're right. But, I, you know. That's, all, that's a connection that there, too, thing. that you found. I'm not going into that right now. I know. You're not jumping down the so. third hole, but I'm just saying that's something you <laughs> yeah, found. I'm just trying connection. to figure out. I'm trying to figure out, like, why would you, why would you call, uh, you know, your game Abandoned? Give it that, you know, that little you know, name and then say, it's not that it's something else. I'm, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So I something else, absolutely. But. Like, and when in your trailer, you cover up the letters P and T, you did that on purpose. Yeah. Cause you made the trailer, like your, your development team made that. So I feel like they're trying to lie to us or I guess I just say deceive. They're trying to trick us into thinking this is PT when it's not. And I don't think that goes over well with the fans, man. Yeah. I just don't think it does. So, I mean, we'll definitely keep you guys updated uh, with this uh, blue oh, box more thing. and PT3 stuff. He came out yesterday with his video, and he says he's delaying it till August. Right. August 12th is when PT came out. August 12th is when PT came out? Of 2014. So people are like, <laughs> there's another connection. If you make a lot of games, man, it's bound to be something that came out around the same time, man. Like, but it lines up with PT in if particular. If they had lined up with Metal Gear, they would have said, oh, that's Hideo. That's like, true. Come on, they man. Lined like, up anything Hideo. Yeah, yeah they just reach it. That's true. That's why. But I'm just saying that it lines up so well with PT in particular yeah. that they seem to be trying to copy. Right, right, right. You know. So. so, I mean, all of this shit is interesting with Blue Box Games. Uh, I want to see where this leads because I definitely want to see if people are right or if this shatters a lot of people's feelings. And then You've I want to see if it Fs We've up all been the played. Uh, Blue Box Games launch because if they drop this shit and it ain't that, then they, <laughs> they're going to die. I don't think anybody is ever They're going to dive, game. dude. But, you know, it's No it's one's going to trust them ever again. Yeah, it's so, like boy cried wolf, right? I mean, this is a, a thin line that they walking on with this. Yeah, fence. it is. So man. I want to see who falls. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so, Godspeed, man. I'm trying to see if they <laughs> land on their feet or if they break yeah. every bone in their body. Yep. But um, <laughs> on to on to the to the next one. Um, it looks like uh, there's some Guerrilla Games action going on, right? So, new IP. Yeah. So we Tell just got that. word that Guerrilla Games has been working on a new IP for the last three years. Hmm. A brand new IP. Since 2018, right? Since 2018. Right. And right. so, like, that's nuts because we know they've been working on Horizon Forbidden West, too. Right. So when I heard this, first of all, there's just no way of knowing what this IP could be. I know some people thought Killzone. Mm -hmm. Right. Killzone. Um, it's been a while. It's been a while, and so that's a Guerrilla Games, and we haven't heard from them yet, so some people are thinking it's that. So that's one speculation that it could be another Killzone game, or it could just be an entirely new IP, which I would hope for because I'm not the biggest fan of Killzone yeah. because Killzone and Shadowfall just wasn't very good. I didn't I like Arachnid, Killzone. think Arachnid was in the comments saying Arachnid Killzone said was he like liked one of his Killzone. favorite ones. He liked Killzone like 2, I think, or 3. Yeah, yeah. He said that he hated Shadowfall. Right. And uh, I, I didn't like Shadowfall at all. Like, I tried to give it a good college try. I remember when they launched that for the PS4, mm -hmm. I was really impressed with how it looked. It was a great, like, um, 
technical showcase of what yeah. the PS4 could do. Right. But I couldn't get into the game. Like it just wasn't fun for me. And I tried. I gave it like you the whole good college try. I put yeah. like probably six hours into it. Mm-hmm. I got stuck in like a bug and I was like stuck and I just like, you know what, I'm not enough. I had enough of this game. Yeah. And I gave up on it. Um, which was so weird because Horizon Zero Dawn is like such a good game. And to think that they made such a bad game before that one is weird to me. Yeah. But so there's some speculation that it could be Killzone, but I hope it's a new IP. And what I found interesting was like a lot of these game studios, like Insomniac, Guerrilla Games. Right. Um, Naughty Dog, even like Rockstar, a lot of these studios, they only release like one game or like Cedar to Project Red. They're working on like one game. The whole studio is all invested into one game. And then when they finish that game, they move on. They move on, on to the next one, yeah. It's not like Ubisoft or EA where there are multiple projects going on and right. every year they're releasing It's because stuff. they're dedicating like all of their resources to, to one that one game. perfect game. So if this is the case, then that means that they've they're branched branching. off their resource from Horizon. Right. Forbidden West That's to do I this thought. other one. That's so, what I thought. Is but, this them expanding? Is this them separating their branches? Is this them growing? Maybe what they does just this mean maybe they had, you know, everything they needed. I mean, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn would be a solid foundation and you just have to build upon that, right? So maybe it took less guys uh to That's make true. Horizon Forbidden West. It looks the same as Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, technically, just, just the like some new and locations stuff. Yeah. and stuff like that, you know, and right. probably just a little bit more cleaner and prettier because right. it's on a better system. So, I mean, maybe like the majority of the hard legwork had been done already. And so they were able to take their time if they've been working on Forbidden West as soon as they got done with Zero Dawn. I think you know you're what right. I mean? Then they would have had right. probably enough time to branch them off and then be able to work on two at once and probably hire some more people too. I think you're right. right. Yeah, I think they are growing. I think Horizon Forbidden, I mean, Zero uh, Zero Dawn really helped put them on the map. Yeah. And they probably grew a lot from that. Probably. And they're probably getting to the point where they're like, could maybe turn into a Bethesda, mm-hmm. right? Where they have more yeah. games, more IPs being worked on simultaneously. Right, right, right. Versus just like one game at a time. Right. right I right. wish Naughty Dog would turn into that. I can't believe Naughty Dog hasn't turned into that where they're pumping out more than one game. They probably time. are, but they well, they're probably working on things at the same time, but it's probably because they're all large scale games that they just And don't, they're perfect, which I get. They don't release them you know, like that, you know? Yeah, like it's you hard probably to make it's great games like that. But yeah, it's like Rockstar. Rockstar go give you two solid big ass games in the games the same are too year. perfect. Yeah. They've been They need really every polished. hand on deck, right? They yeah. need every hand on deck, which which you I get. Rarely, but... You rarely see that like, you know. A Rockstar game has like huge glitches or something like that that just right. isn't like, you know, repairable or something, you know. I think it just says a lot about where Guerrilla Games is going. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited because I, I do want, whenever Sony's first parties release a game, I'm always excited about them. Like, I'm always pumped. Like, Ratchet and Clank, I'm pumped. Yeah. You know, Spider Man, Miles Morales, I'm pumped. Like, whenever there's like a first party studio game that comes out, I'm always super excited, and I do feel like they're kind of sometimes pretty few and far between. Uh-huh. I wish more of them came out every year. Yeah. And so that's what I like when I hear this. Like, okay, dope. We're not just – maybe we get Horizon, and then, like, the very next year we get another game from them. Like, we're not waiting, you know, three or four years between, like, each game from them. Like, that's what I'm excited about when I hear this. I think I also think that um, with some of those companies, like, uh, because they're all under the, the the PlayStation umbrella or they're working along with PlayStation to produce, you know, first party type games or whatever or, or exclusives. They're not trying to step on each other's toes. Oh, they're lining it up. So, you know, ways, you're yeah. trying to, you're, mm-hmm. you know, you know, PlayStation is coming out with like three three games from their umbrella. Mm-hmm. So you trying to work it with PlayStation to find out right. what's a good window right. for us to drop it that won't impede on on your scores or, you know, your your profit margins or whatever, you know? So I, I think it's just working with like that. Yeah. That can that's be probably true, the biggest issue. Yeah, that's true as well. Because, yeah. you know, PlayStation's got such a big group of developers that they've always got something in the works. Everyone has to make so their money. you just got to figure mm-hmm. out when you can slide in with yeah. yours. You Everyone has mean? to make their money. And you all want to release at the most valuable time of the year, like holiday season, right. third, fourth quarter, Yeah, where Ratchet kind of took a little bit of an L by launching in June. But yeah. because there's such a game drought, I think they're gonna make they're gonna sell tons of copies. I think it was so, a perfect time because it's right at yeah. the peak of summer. It's just you usually first party time. games don't seem to usually launch around summertime. Usually summertime is like for obscure games and like you pick up you 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 pick up the games you didn't play in the holiday in yeah, the summertime. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And so not usually a whole lot of new stuff comes out in the summer, which I always complained about that. I always wished more games launched in the summer because when we're kids, you're growing up, you have you the summer have one off. Or something like and that. And you're like, yeah. dang, man, I want a new game when it's summertime and I'm off of school. Right. Why do the games come out when I'm working, right? You know? But, yeah, for sure. But you're right. But um, for the biggest news mm. of this podcast for this week, um, basically this is, too, this is massive guys it's 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 like the best news you could ever hear i'm just gonna you know i won't waste no more time fable four okay was talked about by phil spencer and he said it's in good hands so let's dive into this <laughs> all right so in good hands like what does he mean and is it big hands are the, is it like we're talking 4k ray tracing 60 frames per hands. second like, yeah, like, are the hands, like, super detailed where you can see all the wrinkles in the varicose veins and stuff like that? Are they strong, maybe? You know? Maybe, like, they're they're powerful. I don't know, Is that what he means by good? But, uh, you know, in seriousness, <laughs> like, you know, Fable 4, you know, he's talked about it, but you, do you remember what he said? Yeah, basically, um, he was in an interview and someone brought up Fable 4 because yeah. we know, you know the studio. Who made Fable? You always know them because uh, Lionhead Studios. Lionhead Studios. Yeah. Lionhead Studios. You said they're out, right? They're right. no longer associated with Fable Four. Peter, Peter Molyneux, Mo- Molyneux, 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 something like yeah. that. Uh, yeah, he's not. He's not on it anymore. Yeah, he's he's not there anymore. So that I think is what largely made Fable Four never see the light of day because I just think the studio was just no longer there. Yeah. But Microsoft still owned the IP, and so I think they did an interesting move here. And they just gave the IP to one of their studios to make, even if so, even though it's not Lionhead. To Playground, right? And they gave it to Playground Games. And Playground Games is the one who makes her, the Horizon series, the Forza Horizon series. Forza. Not the Forza Motorsport series, but the Forza Horizon. Right. Like Her- Horizon 5 coming out this mm-hmm. year, which was announced at the Bethesda Xbox Showcase. So the one thing we can take from hearing that, of course, Phil Spencer was saying you know, it's in good hands because he believes in that studio. Right, 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 right. Playground games, he believes in that studio. And so he's like, don't worry, the games are good hands because the guy who was asking him, how's it going? It's going to be great because it's in great hands. It's basically all he said. It just let us know it's Playground Games making it. Yeah. And we did learn that um, it's going to be using the Forza Motorsport engine. Mm-hmm. Which that's cool because that's it a looks pretty beautiful. engine. It's a, it looks like a great world that they do. You know the the Forza games in they make hella realistic cars. And really stuff like pretty. That. So I mean, if they're trying to go with like a realistic uh, point of view with Fable instead of making it look cartoon, cartoony yeah. or something like that, or like you know a fake or something, um, then I, I feel like there's a lot of detail that can be put into these characters and how they look. Um, like. So. What did you think about some of these rumors? I remember I listed them off to you. You guys got to hear some of these rumors. So none of this is confirmed, okay? But so many rumors surround this game. Mm-hmm. Would any of these appeal to you? I'll say that. Would any of these ideas appeal to you? Mm-hmm. One, Fable 4 will be an MMO <coughs> set in the Fable universe. Okay. Uh, there are going to be several changes made to the gameplay and core theme, so a different theme. Hmm. Um. Other leaks suggest the game may even involve time travel and could be set across multiple different planets. Um, do any of these rumors excite you, anger you, at make you apprehensive, hopeful what? Okay, so um, as far as all of them are concerned, I think that they would all be great in their okay. own way if added to the, to the, uh, the IP. Um, so I'll, I'll explain to you why I would think each one is. Okay. So as far as it being an MMO, um, I think that it would be interesting to be in the Fable world and then have an MMO. It, the Fable world isn't too crazy different. Um, so it's, like nothing, it's nothing really yeah. yeah, it's nothing really elaborate or anything like that. So it'd be fairly simple. It would just have magic and you know and, and fighting and stuff like that. The only the only reason why it would be cool would be uh, the items that you could get. Because, you know, Fable had a lot of legendary items that you could pick up and to walk around with those things if they were one of ones. I've always wanted a game that would have tons of epic, like, legendary items from the past, but one of ones. Hmm. And the only way to acquire it is by doing something to that person who obtained it or Hmm. something. So you could have a sword that was passed down from, like, six different people because they all got killed 
with it or something like Interesting. that. Interesting. You know, but um, never come across one. But uh, that would be a cool aspect. I don't think and the multiplayer. Yeah, with friends. and the mul- yeah. the multiplayer, and then possibly having something you know on like a fallout sense where you can build like a house and decorate your house or or something like that and then people are actually able to come by and see the trophies that you've acquired throughout your journey or whatever you know something like that um would be cool uh but i don't think it'll go there I, i don't think that fable is really that type of world that would uh would do that i don't i don't think that that's yeah how do you fit like a really fun quirky campaign experience in an mmo right and then how do you how do you change the world around you in an mmo right in that sense oh how do you it's always it's always seemed fake great point when they say like oh we need a a hero you know the last outrider to come into but dude there's a thousand of us there's a billion of us out here it's mad of us so this one of one shit like don't tell me that in the story if you got an mmo because fable is about changing the world around you and you changing too right how do you do that in an mmo right it's it's about you growing and then your your growth affects the world around you and all that stuff so uh leads me to my second point where you were saying uh about changing the core elements of the game uh the the elements of the game, you know, are that you start off as like one person and then you, you know, you learn you and then you proceed up. and then, and then, you know, your journey yeah. shapes the way the world, how the world sees you. Mm-hmm. So if they change not only like how the world sees you, but they change like how it affects the world in general, not just how people perceive you, you know, that you can actually devastate areas kind of like how, you know, Fallout 3 was where, you, you know, you literally town. do nuke town, yeah. you know, and blow the whole thing up or whatever. Like if you can decimate a whole town, uh, and kill it and then you're deemed bad and that town, there's nobody else in that town because you killed that whole town. And, you know, they got to slowly trickle effect. people. Yeah, yeah. They got to slowly trickle people in by lowering prices of houses, but maybe you can buy all the houses and then you make a profit off of that town or something like that. Or or you can manipulate things to get people, you know, purchase towns, right. different things like that. Like, I'm so all for you're saying more adjusting expand me. on the core mechanics rather than changing them completely. Yeah, I would okay. definitely say expanding okay. on it more so than to change it. I feel like it, it had a good core mechanic in it. Right. But if you could widen that, then it would be better. I see. But if you're going to change it altogether, then I feel like yeah, it I looks, it sounds like it's any no of the other fable, games right? out there. Yeah, it's not, it's it's not no fable. It's no longer fable anymore. Because yeah. yeah. literally every fable has had the same type of a storyline. You're you changing know, to go with it. It's very big on changing the world around you. Right. Whether it be in buying property, whether it be in, you know, you decimating things, you become Killing evil people, and afraid of people are afraid of you. Whatever it is, you're impacting the world around you. That's a big, that's what fable is, right? Right. I mean, right and right. it's a story. It's a fable. Yeah. And then what was you the know? last one you had said? And then the last one was, um, it might deal with time travel and you could end up on multiple different planets. Now, that aspect would be really cool because you just have a lot more area to venture. You know what I mean? It's not the Forest of Albion or whatever or, right. or, or that, that world. It's other worlds as well. You know what I mean? That could lead to a lot of, of traveling. And that's one of the things that I always wished was more in the game. Like that was like that's like one of the games where I wished that there was so much more to explore in it. You know what I mean? Like Fallout, there's so much to explore. You won't even get to see everything that they've put into the game. You know, uh, even Cyberpunk, there's so many alleys and, and streetways and stuff like that that you might not ever go down. And there's shit down there. You might not think it, but there's stuff down there and you just haven't found it yet. But, you know, if you were able to give me that with Fable, because I've I felt like with Fable, I've I've, you know, covered every inch of it. Right and, and and been able to see everything that Fable has to offer, but if you could if you could fill in spaces with things that I've never seen, you know what I mean? And it's like, oh, I play the game again on New Game Plus, and I see some new shit, different planet, or something like that. The, yeah, the different only, planets. The only thing I'll add to that is, I agree. I think like if they can pull it off, it'd mm-hmm. be cool. I worry <laughs> that they might bite off more than they can chew with a, something like that. Instead of like, I think like take it easy with the first delve back into Fable yeah. to get us excited about it again. And then maybe start to make these big sweeping changes, you know, like once you've proven that you can actually make a Fable game. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be my recommendation. However, I agree with you. If they could pull that off, that's sick. 
Yeah. Like that's dope. I would that would be really fun. I would I mean, love that. Could you imagine uh like almost like a six series like DLC that just keeps adding planets? To yeah, it. a new planet. And they're to all to? available on Game Pass, so you don't have to buy anything. If you I just don't, don't want, want them to be like Destiny planets. I want no. them to be like cool, a lot of depth, big. Yeah. Place yeah, to but explore. I'm saying like, you know, if they just added like one storyline, but the storyline isn't done, it continues. Right. Almost like as if they did like what Telltale Games did, adding chapters. Right. But they're like big. You know what I mean? Big parts of the game where they're mm-hmm. giving you like each new edition is giving you like six, seven hours of gameplay or something like that because they gave you a new right. planet uh, that you're going on and you're still on this journey. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and it finally finishes after like the seventh one or something like that. That'd be like fucking like an epic book. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Where you read a book yeah. and you got six Yeah, six I books, agree like, 100%. That I, just, would be dope. I just, I'm not confident necessarily that they can pull that vision off. Right. But that's a dope vision. Yeah. It's a really so, cool vision. But It's exciting I mean, stuff. To hear anything about Fable itself is just exciting. And then the fact that they called it Fable 4. And that it's not like Fable, like a rebranding or something like that, like a remake True. or anything like that. It's, you know, it's continuing on. You know what I mean? Even though none of them have ever been a continuation with the same person. Yeah, and just you know letting I mean? us know it's there. It exists still. It hasn't fallen by the wayside. They're still talking it's about real. it. They're still making it. It's literally being worked on right now by this studio. Right. Um, and we know that they're releasing... <laughs> horizon right now so we know what they're working on they're done with horizon we know that they're focused on a different game right now right now and so mm-hmm. that's good to know that it's fable and that yeah. this game will come out for sure in the next couple of years yeah so yeah and yeah cool. horizon is definitely about to be out it's about like, to launch soon, this year, sometime this year. Months, yeah, yeah so, so and i'm sure they probably already had some of their team working on fable, fable already so, right exactly i'm hoping that you know mid next year we see some some footage of it finally That'd be dope. You know, I think I think uh, those are the two that I'm really gonna be looking forward to is Fable and um, and Harry Potter, the, the Hogwarts, uh, the Hogwarts yeah. Legacy. Those are the two that I'm really gonna be looking forward Absolutely. to hearing from, Absolutely. You know, so I can see where they where they've gone. But uh, all right, that is it for this week's episode. Uh, thank you again for uh, watching. Thank you again for listening. Um, also, if you uh, if you are interested, the Patreon link is down below. So, you know, we accept any kind of donations. We got three tiers set up, one, three, and five. Uh, we appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, also, a link down there for shirts. Um, we got these on here. You've seen the, the black one. I got the gray. You've seen the red one I had on last podcast. We also got a few other shirts on there. So if you'd like to be part of the Schmigigans group, that is available <laughs> on there. Um, I'm going to be getting nice. mine soon. Um, and uh, yeah. Until next week, we'll catch you guys later. Deuces. Peace. See you. <laughs> Got to throw marks in there. I got you, mate.